Hello, everybody. I think I'm about ready to get started. Welcome, Murphy. I went through a nice purge of, like, four Twitch bots. <laughs> Let, let's just say I don't believe somebody's watching over 100,000 channels at once. Don't believe it. So I guess we'll talk about where we are with Trials and Tribulations. Unfortunately, we're still in the Maid Cafe episode. <laughs> Just That basically summarizes how I feel towards it. This song in particular summarizes my great disappointment <laughs> we are currently. I really hope to be done with this case pretty quickly. I'm not going to say this is my least favorite case across all of Phoenix Wright, but this is easy bottom five. <laughs> like, possibly bottom three, I'll be real with you. So hopefully we'll get through this. I have notes, despite switching over to a new PC, that there are some achievements that I could get while playing. Hey all, says Dango. Welcome, Dango. Also, Chad, let me know if the microphone sounds a little better today, after the updates. Yeah, I, I am. I'm not, as excited as the music is. I am. I am not that excited <laughs> to continue with this one. I'm hoping to just quote unquote get through it. And hope that the final case is plural or a little better. I'm, I'm disappointed to say the least. Spin, spin! Spin, spin, indeed. Why is this glitched out? One day, chat, we'll get what I'm looking for. Come on. Seriously? What is going on? There we go. Normally, I don't have this issue with opening up uh, Steam, but it was just giving me, like, a white screen instead of options to start the game. That was a bit weird. We'll be starting in just a moment. You love the insanity of the case? I am not a fan of it. So I'm just hoping to get through it. Oops, sorry about that. Let's jump into the game. There we go. We have a safety save in case I want to go back for an achievement. I'll make one more safety save later in this session, most likely. January 7th, 12.52pm, right in company law offices. How do you think the trial went this morning? How do you think it went? Not a bit crazy in there. I just wonder if that killed our chances. Yeah, I guess it did get out of hand. Mr. Kudo's testimony did nothing to help us. Plus, now we don't even know the identity of the waitress who laced the coffee. All we know is what the old Co Mr. Kudo saw. The apron straps and the ribbon. And that the victim was wearing an earpiece when his eardrum was ruptured. Akabara, a terrifying case of contra contradictinitis. I was about to say contradictions, but then I'm like, wait a minute. Time to play doctor and find herself secure then, huh? Yeah, we've got to find one for Maggie. But she's going to have a terminal case of guilty. I'm going to move to anywhere, I guess, detention center. January 7th, detention center, visitor's room. Maggie's still in questioning. But... But we got questions to ask her, too. Maggie? Maggie? Get down, Maya. This isn't a playground, you know. Now we're in Trespian. Hey, it's playing Doctor. Are we sure this is a kid's game? Mm. Empty as usual. Yeah. It's lunchtime, too. That's it. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, that sounds like... Now just an eight, pal. Come on, I know you can. He's getting really worked up about something. No, that's the wrong number. Ugh. Looks like an A would have netted me five bucks anyway. What a ripoff. What's the problem, Detective Gumshoe? Huh? Oh, it's you. I, uh, I was, ha, I was, ha, 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 ha. I was just listening to the radio, pal. To the radio? Hey, Detective Gumshoe's having lunch here. He is. He's having the twin tea set. Uh-huh. 
What can I say? Guess I'll talk to him. Today's trial. This is a nightmare. How am I supposed to look Maggie in the eye now, pal? I see no memory addresses. I don't think they ever said this was a kid's game. Mm. You really drove her into a corner, you know. Having not purchased this game before, I actually don't know what the rating of this game is. Let's look it up real quick. Allegedly. T for teen. You really... You really drove her into a corner, you know. But well, welcome, my son, Unknown Ranger. You always blow apart my testimony. Why, of all days, didn't you do it today? Sorry. There just weren't any holes in it, for once. Yeah, what happened? Usually your testimonies are like Swiss cheese. Swiss cheese? You preferred crumbly like aged Parmesan? Anyway, this case has already been ruled on. There shouldn't be any holes left to find. Though, so, did Maggie say anything to you? About me, I mean. Well, um, how did she put it again? I can't believe Detective Gumshoe. I hate him, sir. I mean it. I don't ever want to see him again. Something like that. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Gotta say, he's he's channeling his inner warrior, says Waluigi. Wah, 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 Chan. Poor Gumshoe. Might explain why Edgeworth cuts his face so much. Well, I mean... To be fair, I don't think there would be so many contradictions if in the Phoenix Wright universe they actually bothered to tell the defense anything before the trial. I love that like 80% of the evidence is introduced in the case itself and the defense just has to know <laughs> like how to use it just on the spot. Quite ridiculous. Please, Detective Gumshoe, I, I didn't mean- Why? Why is this happening? He's banging his head against the wall, Nick. Oh, man. Poor Gumshoe. Ask about the lunch special, I guess. So, did you like the twin tea set? I never paid that much lun money for lunch before. Oh, Gumshoe. I was gonna say, in this economy, that's not that uncommon anymore. I was so nervous, my hands were shaking. Discovery isn't a thing in Japan, apparently not. Well, well... But also, allegedly this is America. Allegedly. Big air quotes. I love every time we're like, yeah, this is the US system. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like, clearly this is America TM. Exactly. I'm like, I too go to the maid cafes and also the reclusive hermit uh, spiritualist <laughs> camps near the mountains, of course. Mm -hmm. So, how did it taste? to Panifornia, you're right. Well, for 20 bucks, I guess. I don't know how to describe it, really. It was delicate. Delicate? Dan Francokio. Ooh, that's a nice one, Burpee. You mean you liked it? It didn't taste bad to you? Eat your hamburger ice? Come she dot dot dots. What's the matter with him? Looks like he's thinking. That's it! I've been trying to think of the right word to describe the taste. And I just realized, it's bad! That's it, it tasted bad! Why did he call it delicate? What? Phoenix size. Terrace Pharma? Oh no, Blue Donna added again. It tasted wah. Yeah, it's true. It's just kind of hard to admit it to yourself when you pay 20 bucks for it, you know? Oh yeah, that, that, I guess that's fair. That's fair at Gumshoe's point. Maybe he should have found out about the price after he had finished eating. Hey Nick, maybe that's why Glen Elg came here. Maybe he heard about the super fierce twin tea set. By fierce, you mean fearsome. Speaking of Glen Elg, that reminds me. We still hardly know anything about the guy. Why don't we ask Detective Gumshoe what he knows? Being as he's here. I guess we'll ask about the radio. 
So what were you all excited about earlier? I think the say of the food is why this restaurant is failing. Probably. And also the fact that it's a maid cafe with no maids. <laughs> huh? That's right. I you were listening to the radio or something. Oh, that? That was nothing. I, I wasn't excited. Come on, Detective Gumshoe. You can tell little old me. What were you listening to? I mean, he's obviously listening to lottery numbers. N nothing, really. It was just the, um, daily exercise show. Mango says, I personally eat my traditional American hamburger and my traditional American katsu. Yeah, that's true. They had Maggie. Well, past tense. That is true. Past tense, they did have Maggie. Really? Why are we doing a lock for this? What the? A psych lock? I mean, I'm just gonna present him a ticket. I don't even know why they're bothering with this. Hmm. <laughs> this lunch specials lobster sure is great. And why are there tears in your eyes? Okay. I mean, I'm. I have a lottery ticket, right? That I can show him. Yeah. Why don't I just? I'm just gonna present it then. Fine. Take that. Well, this seems a little unnecessary, but sure. The radio. Alright, Detective Gumshoe. Tell me the truth. What were you listening to? No way, pal. Now that you made a big thing of it, I'm not gonna tell you. We'll see about that, pal. Considering all the noise you were making while you were listening. It's pretty clear what kind of radio program it was. I'd say it was related to... Oh, is this for people that haven't figured out that the other person was listening to the radio, even though he literally had a lottery ticket? I'm just gonna present the lottery ticket. Take that! Take that. I'm right, aren't I? That's right, we were kinda here in America, maybe. You were listening to the lottery results, weren't you? You thought you'd try to win big, just like Glen Elk did. It's... it's like you can see right through me! Huh? Cracked him already. See, pal, that's why I said it was nothing. I guess unlock successful question mark. Let's ask about the radio. I'm usually pretty lucky, so I figured I'd give it a try. Is he? Is he, though? <laughs> Chat, um... I don't... Yeah, I just like, uh, yeah, I press X to doubt, exactly. I'm like, um, see any other game he's in? I don't think so. <laughs> Chat's calling Cap. I'm just like, yeah, uh, no. <laughs> we're we're going with a hard no on this one. It's with everyone in the lottery. So, how did it go? I won 50 cents. It'd be better to win nothing at all than half a lousy buck. I was so mad. <laughs> this is the real life. <laughs> I mean, I guess in the way... Actually, you know what? That, that's an interesting point that you bring up, Murphy, because uh, I feel like this game in particular has been very loose with the psych lock uh, answers. Like, I'll give an example. So there's a couple times we've identified... You know, the fact that they're lying, but then they just lie to us immediately afterwards and it doesn't trigger the psych lock. I'm probably going to talk about that when we go to review. It's a little awkward. And there's a couple ones where, like, we get hung up on, like, semantics. Where, like, that's fine if they want to try to play it a bit more clever, quote-unquote, between the second and the third game. But it's definitely one of those things where I'm like, did it really re reveal it? Yeah, like, this one's definitely a joke. But I mean, like, just in general, like, it doesn't apply just to Gumshoe, but, like, actual serious scenes, it still feels very weird with it. Supposed to be their unwillingness to say the truth. Yeah, but they also lie to us afterwards, too, which is the problem. Yeah, I, I think it's just kind of... I don't know if it's, like, a translation issue in the third game, that they unintentionally just immediately lie to you in, in like, the subsequent phrases. And then even sometimes later on, it ends up being a psych lock that you have to undo, and I'm like, but... I mean, we knew it was a lie, but... dot dot dot, question mark. Anyway. Let's continue onwards. 
Yeah, I know the feeling. I thought the same kind. Oh, I bought the same kind of ticket as Mr. Elk, see? And they got this special radio show where they announce the winning numbers. They even do the drawings live on air. It's intense, pal. I bet that's what Mr. Elk was listening to on the day he was killed. Yeah. What time is it now? Uh, it's just after 1.30. Are the lottery results always broadcast at the same time? Yeah. Look, I got this flyer when I bought the ticket. Millionaire Radio, there you go. Millionaire Radio Flyer, experience the most thrilling 10 minutes of your life every Monday at 1.30 p.m. Okay, so we're establishing why the vic- See, but- uh, Whatever, it's fine. We, we already established I figured out the mystery, like 90% of the mystery. So we already know Glenn Elg was killed because he refused to hand over the disc. The disc was probably related to finances and was a way for the other person to make up their debts. Because presumably they hit somebody with the scooter, that's why the scooter was banged up. But then he didn't go through with it because he won the lottery, and that's why there was like a scuffle over whether or not the ticket was there. So like we've already established this, but I mean I guess if you didn't figure it out, it's it's cool. Millionaire Radio, that sounds cool! Tell the scooter they give the hackers programmers. Mm. I want to try it, Nick. And buy a ticket, Maya. With your own money. Okay, so do you need me to do anything? I mean, I imagine I have to present the other person to him, because they did say we had more information. Let's present him based off our earlier conversation. This guy was a real programming genius. They called him the walking computer at the place where he worked. What happens when he crashes, though? Does he just stop moving all of a sudden? Ugh. He wasn't literally a computer, Maya. Anyway, there's nothing between Maggie and the victim. Oh, Scouter. I read that as Scooter for some reason. Yeah, it's true. The Scouter is very ridiculous. I can confirm programs that are work ridiculous cyber. I'm like, I can confirm that too. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, yeah, I, I'm like, yeah. I mean, I guess the closest thing, maybe some people have Google Glass or something. Yeah, that's what we found out yesterday too. Hey, Detective Gumshoe, don't you have any information that's a bit more fun? Fun? Uh, I, uh, whoa, I know. So have you paid a visit to where, Sir, where Mr. Elg worked yet? You might as well. I'm half expecting to walk into some weird dystopian Tron like business center. I imagine we're going to see some real goofiness with character design in a moment. His workplace? Where's that? Oh, we'll probably also see the mysterious woman that we saw the previous day, who's probably the waitress that was seen in the first day of the trial when they replicated the crime scene via mirrors. And then it would make sense that maybe she set it up because she's smarter than Furio Tigre. So, having the smart person be the computer person involved in the same company would probably check out. So we're just gonna look for anybody with similar hair to Maggie, and that'll be basically GG. That'll be case in the bag, as it were. Who uses Google Glass? That was pointless, too. I mean... Pe people spend money on stupid things. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to go too far with it in case people have some loyalties with it, but, uh... Some people are very diehard Microsoft and or Apple fans, and I'll leave it there. Okay, so where is his workplace, according to him? A computer firm called Blue Screens Incorporated or something like that. Oh, so he does work at Windows. Sounds like a real stable company. This could be fun, Nick. Let's go. Computers aren't really my thing, Maya. We'll be fine. I know all about that high-tech stuff. No, you don't, Maya. No, you don't. I wonder about that. It's just around the corner from this joint. You should take a look. Computer firm called Blue Screen Incorporated, huh? Hmm. Okay. I, 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 I'm gonna, okay. Well, it's Blue Screen Incorporated, so there's gonna be a lot of blues, but like how, how future tech do I think the people are? Um, oh, are they also gonna, are, is everybody gonna be wearing a scouter here? Well, I wanna know. Let's find out, chat. Oh, see, that guy looks like he's wearing Google Glass. Also, that posture from the guy on the left. It's it's a little Tron-esque. January 7th, Blue Screen Incorporated. Wow, this place is so high-tech. You almost smell the electricity in the air. 
very high tech yet at the same time, very dangerous cables. How do they work in this kind of environment with cables on the floor like that? I have so many questions. Ludana says, huh? I agree. Beautiful, Maya. I can't work without electricity, you know. Who are you? I'm assuming it's gonna be the woman we saw earlier. Yeah. Yeah, that that's more what I was thinking, to be honest. The, the other characters, you know, maybe 50-50, that was exactly what I was expecting. Oh, um, hello. I'm sorry. Access is restricted to authorized personnel only. Also, do her outfit lights up? That is quite something. Yeah, so I'm guessing she's the quote-unquote fake waitress. This is a computer programming laboratory. There are far too many trade secrets that could be leaked. Wow, what secrets? This was before cable management was invented, clearly, says Dango. It's true. Everyone must be so hot. Yeah, like, where are the fans? I don't even see vents in this room other than from the ceiling, question mark. Even then, like, it looks more like a light fixture than possibly any kind of ventilation. In fact, how did we get here? Did we just wander into a random office? Like, what are we looking at? Everything you see here is classified. No information can leave the building. Giant hole AC unit, that's why I'm like, I don't see how else they could function without it. Understood. Who is this woman? She's like a robot from some kind of whacked educational show. Educational. there you go. My name is Lisa Basil. Oh, see? Okay, so here's the other telltale sign that you may be a computer programmer. If your name is a palindrome, <laughs> then you clearly work in computers. <laughs> or slash the computer industry. I'm the company director. Yep, oh, okay. Director? She's human? Seems more like a ghost in a shell. Oh, oof. Ooh, that was that was such a stretch on that reference chat. Ooh. I'm gonna say, don't pull a muscle, Phoenix, with that stretch. Blue Donna with the classic question mark. You know what? That's appropriate, Blue Donna. And that thing over her eye. Isn't that the same device as Glen Elk's? That's a DMH, right? Nice try, but it's the other way around, Maya. It's an HMD. All of my programmers here at Blue Screen Incorporated are supplied with HMDs. Did you write programs too? No, I just enjoy wearing this. They are pretty cool. I wouldn't mind one. Nice, we're gonna... Oh, what is this? Wait, what's, what's this? They were hiding it before with somebody there. Wow, look at this mess. It's like they're all betting tickets. What kind of betting tickets? We're betting on which horse will win a given race. For horse racing tickets. Oh wow, drawers are stuffed full of these. Don't ask questions you don't want answers to, say chat. Chat contemplating the meaning of the HMD as usual. Looks like they're all losing tickets though. Glen Elk's losing horse racing tickets gathered up. There's over 500 of them. Found in Glen Elk's desk. How many tickets would get you what? A buck down at the recycling center? But I didn't know you were so hard up that you try to profit from the dead, Nick. I'm just taking them as evidence, Maya. Hmm. Whoa, look at this desk, Nick. What a mess. Wow, we just happened to go straight to where he worked? The exact spot? This makes me question what the rest of the building is like. We found the one room he works in at the corporation. Looks pretty average to me. You can't get any work done with everything all over the place like this. You think? You know whiz kids can work under any condition, you know. She dot 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 exclamations arcs. He's trying to hint that I should tidy my desk more. I'll clean up my desk when Maya stops asking silly questions. No hurry, then. Oof. Hey! This calendar. What about it? This is another hint about tidying. You could forget it. This one's marked December 3rd in red pen. December 3rd? The day Mr. Elg was murdered. I saw known ranger says, I think I'm sure someone else saw this where he worked. Yeah, but I mean, like, we went into a building that presumably has multiple rooms. We just happened to go into the exact room he's in. Unless it's, like, literally a one-room office. We just kind of arbitrarily walked in and found exactly where he was.
Because uh, Gumshoe just said that he worked around the corner, and not that he was in, like, cubicle A or anything. He just, just happened to find this room. We didn't even ask for directions, apparently. Is there anything else? Yeah, um, it says, meet with the tiger. There's probably signs for him? I don't know. They didn't mention it. Kind of a stretch. The tiger. Yeah, Tigre, or whatever his name was from earlier. Lens calendar added to the court record. The guy with the tiger shirt. I mean, this is not... I mean, sure, we'll take it, I guess. He's really pounding that keyboard, isn't he? Wow. That's where the pro and programmer comes from, huh? Most buildings have directories. Not for specific people. I mean, if you're a grunt worker, most, most of the time you will not have anything directing them to you. Like, there's a general IT, but even then, like, there's only two people here. So if you're thinking of, in the way that this is structured, how many rooms would we have to have checked before we found his exact room? I guess I shouldn't be resting my on my laurels. Gotta expand my skill set and all that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe I should become old CD's apprentice. Um, what about your spirit medium training? Hey, look, Nick. The supercomputer. Looks like it's really smart and wise, doesn't it? Computers are only as smart as the humans who use them, Maya. That explains why we don't use the computer in our office. You work there too, Maya. Yeah, but at least I'm... Please, argue... Don't argue about something that's so trivial. Otherwise, the computer will laugh at you. Then she'd laugh at us, Nick. She's a human, Maya, not a computer. Those pillars almost look like they're moving. Kind of unsettling. Nah, they just look a bit twisted or warped or whatever the word I'm looking for. This office was designed with a futuristic feel in mind. Futuristic? Yes, we tried to imagine what things might look like in the future when we designed it. Helps to soothe and calm the soul. Dot 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 from Maya, indeed. On second thought, I agree with you, Nick. This place really is kind of unsettling. Are we not gonna get names for these people? I guess not. See, that, that leads to more credence that I don't believe we just stumbled upon his office randomly. Whatever, let's talk about Blue Screens Incorporated. So, oh, what exactly is this firm's business? I will try to simplify it so that you can understand. We analyze the data management systems required by certain branches of industry, and then deliver optimum operating systems and source level components to them. Huh? You lost me on the corner of Analyze and Management. Why does your uniform flash in time with your blinks? Because Phoenix, right? Because <laughs> they're busy and obviously know nothing. I'm just saying in general. I, I feel like, again, like, we, we kind of got like a grunt worker, as I said before. I'm not going to mention it any further. We'll just move on. Doesn't matter. They analyze stuff. You got that much, right? The software we produce is distributed on CDs. CDs? Oof. Yes. Compact disc. Digital optical storage media. Of course. CDs are used for software as well as music. It's a small firm, but all my employees are first-class programmers. Let's ask one of them what they're doing. Excuse me, what are you working on right now? Oof. He's got glasses and the scouter thing over his... Ooh, that just seems like a nightmare to work with. I'm researching the impact of time slicing common ideas on logic access to get shared global variables. Obviously, program structure influences response time and performance. The code of independence of variables and memory overheads is virtually important to the success of the execution. Well, you get the idea. This is the sort of thing we're involved in. Did you good people follow all that? Mostly, except you auto advance the dialogue text box, which was kind of rude. Yeah. Your blank smile just said otherwise, Maya. Terrace Pharma, that's right, that's 30. What happened? You know about what happened, right, Miss Basil? You mean about Glenn being poisoned? Yes, I know. It's terrible. Can you tell us anything that might be helpful? I don't think so. Police officer was here earlier, too. But I couldn't tell him anything either because. The waitress who committed the crime has nothing to do with Blue Screens Incorporated. 
Uh oh. How about Mr. Elg's desk? Cleared it out already. No, not yet. It's this one right in front of you. See, that would have made more sense if we talked to her first and then we knew it was his desk. <laughs> If there's anything that might be useful to you, you're welcome to take it. I guess there might be a clue here somewhere. So I guess I'm done. Unless I want to present something to her. I mean, I, well, I guess I could just present him to see if we get anything else. Um, about Mr. Elg. He was a top programmer. I would even say he was a genius. But he did suffer from one or two bugs in his personality. Oh? Like what? He was a bit of a loser. Perhaps that would be the best way to describe it. She says with the blinking suit. That's what got him into trouble. What's the matter? He was a top programmer. I would even say he was a genius. He was really no trouble at all. A model employee. Hey, wait a minute. Now you said something about him being in trouble. Gotta find out exactly what this trouble was. troubles. Um, about Mr. Elg. Was he in some kind of trouble? I'm sorry. Why would you think that? I thought you said something about it just now. Then he got himself into trouble because he was a bit of a loser. There we go, chat. Resi locks. I guess Mr. Elg is like every other man with his own pile of secrets. Is that a Castlevania reference? Let's move... Oh, we haven't been to the kitchen. Let's go to the kitchen. Huh? Mr. Armstrong's talking to someone. I'll be back next month. Ah, uh, Not quite the same person. I didn't see her in the company, so I guess that checks out. We oui, naturalmente. I'll be waiting for you. If you haven't got it by then, I'm afraid it might get a little hot around here. None. I will have everything ready, I promise. I love fire, you know. I love the way it crackles. <laughs> none, none, none. Stop it, I beg you. Then don't let me down. I'll be watching you. What's Rico Robin doing in my ace attorney? My ace non, this is not necessary. You can trust me, mademoiselle. Talk to anyone, and I'll drive a knife right through your heart. Oh, none. You don't have to worry. You know you worry far too much. Maybe this will help you relax. It is like oil of sandalwood. I do love raw meat. From time to time. <laughs> oh! I'll be taking my leave. Goodbye. For now. Ugh. I have the shivers. I must rub some of my oil all over my body. That's not a good mental image. Before I become the nervous wreck. Dear, oh wee oui, wee. Oui. That feels good. Wait, is he just literally doing this in the middle of the kitchen? What? Um, fire hazard? Question mark? Ah! Uh, ooh la la, excusez-moi, monsieur. My eyes, my eyes! Your eyes? If you have trouble with your eyes, you need this. A oil of sandalwood. Ludana seems confused. Isn't that just the leftovers of what you were just using? Well, we'll go through the options. So, Trespian. You don't exactly have many customers, do you, Mr. Armstrong? Nan, you are right, Monsieur. But perhaps that is the perfect time for you to visit me, Nan. That way I can give you my undivided attention and cook for you la dish supr supreme. Putting on a brave face, huh? That's what girls do, Nick. Uh, okay. I don't like that dialogue there, but we'll continue, I guess. You are right. Business is very difficult these days. Perhaps the name is the problem. People do not understand it. They think it is Trey. Just want people to think that 
my restaurant was exclusive. But they think you just serve fast food on the cheap plastic trays? Nick? That's the kind of thing that can make a girl cry. Have you forgotten that Mr. Armstrong is a man, Maya? But this restaurant is my life. It is everything to me. I will defend it till the finale. No one will take it from me. Guess we'll ask about the woman just now. So, who is that woman you were just talking to? Ooh la la. Who saw that? Ah, uh, well, yeah, sorry. So, who was she? She looked so polite and graceful. <laughs> um... Did she not hear the dialogue? So polite? R graceful? She likes raw meat and fires, right? Why... What? Why are we... Why are we flashbacking to something that just happened a minute ago? Phoenix, please. <laughs> I know sometimes you could take breaks between chapters, but I mean, that was literally like 20 dialogue boxes ago or less. I don't need a recap of her misunderstanding. It's fine. Now that I think about it. Hey, Maya. I think it's pretty clear what kind of conversation they were having. Wait, what do you, what do you mean, wait a minute? I think it's pretty clear. <laughs> um... How would you interpret that any other way, other than as a joke? You think so? Well then, let's show him that piece of evidence and see what happens. Raw, indeed. Her brain is, like, processing it. Well, I'm assuming by piece of evidence they mean the loan contract. The long as that paper exists, I am but a delightful angel with the uh, broken wings. An angel, huh? Doesn't bode well when you think about it. We, oui. they keep harassing me month after month. In the end, I had to give in. I agreed to help them. Help them? With what? My bien sûr. If I did not owe them the money, I would have refused. But my ends were tied. Please, what did you agree to help them with? <laughs> None. I, I cannot say. If I tell you, that woman, she will slice me up and eat me with the uh, uh, salad garnish. Ew. It doesn't mean that it'll literally be sliced up and served with garnish. I'm gonna guess that woman has something to do with your loan contract, am I right? Uh... Please, Mr. Armstrong, tell us about that woman. Okay, so the woman just now just updated again. The woman who was here earlier. I take it that she's, um... Why, has it come to this? What a tragedy. Suddenly, I find myself so deep in La Debt. This is a sign of the bad, bad world we live in, huh? No, I'd say it's more of a sign of the bad, bad culinary skills. Um, psh, I guess. The woman who was here. The scary woman. She is from the loan office. Loan office? Is that where you borrowed half a million dollars from? Oh, right. Phoenix, I don't think, realizes the other person was a loan shark. I don't think he put two and two together yet. We're one plus one, honestly. We're, we're gonna probably be here for like an hour before he catches up to where we were. We. Tender loan, it is called. Catchy name. Just hearing it makes me want to borrow some money. Please, you must not borrow from Zan. If you must, no more than ten dollars. Ten dollars? That's your whole monthly stipend, Maya. Hey, I get a bit more than that, thank you very much. The tender lender is the loan office you borrowed half a million from, huh? I wonder if they got anything to do with this case. Oh man, Chad, this, this is gonna be a slow investigation. Ah, yes, $12, says Murphy. Yeah, well, I think our detective skills are about as non existent as the cooking skills of uh, <laughs> Chef. It's gonna be a while before they figure it out. It's Tigre, even though it's very obviously Tigre. Whatever. Let's ask about Tender Lender so we can go talk to him. I am a weak woman. When I am upset, I have to buy something nice to cheer me up. Thanks to him loaning me the money, I have to pay half a million dollars now. I am like his slave. I have to do every everything that he tells me to. Ooh, those, uh... Apostrophes are getting me. Um, who's this he? La Tiger. The Tiger? We. Oui. He is the manager of the tender lender. A terrifying man. 
the big city mobster. When he shouts at me, my knees are trembling and his voice is ringing in my ears for three days. As soon as I hear the noise of that battered old scooter he rides, I start to cry. Big city mobster who rides a battered old scooter. Um, does this guy any chance resemble me? Oh, none, none, none. This man has the presence. A most formidable personality. Damn. Not wrong, though. We do have no personality slash presence. Although, we he does have spiky air just like you. Okay, at least somebody acknowledges the joke. We There is a resemblance here, I suppose. Hmm. Sounds like this loan office is worth checking out after all. You went to visit the tender lender. It's beyond vitamin squip. Hey, Nick. Need money. I can loan you some. As long as it's less than three dollars. That's Winston who has no presents. Uh, kind of. Um, thanks for the offer. It's beyond vitamin square, huh? Okay, well, I don't see anything to do with him yet. So I guess we'll go further? So we'll make a safety save for achievements. So I made a note here that this is another opportunity where I just have to present a bazillion things if I want to get an achievement. So strap in, chat. We're going to be here a while. So we're going to present the badge. Please, Monzor, there is no need to show me that. You are among Phoenix Wright, the worst defense attorney in town. To be fair, he's more of a similar than, than Sonic does to Shadow. Kind of. Pretty sure I know how he formed this completely wrong impression of me. Um, the last time we met, can I show you this badge? We. Oui. We flashed it to everyone in the restaurant. Like, then Ehop is a bigger fan of flashing stuff than you are, Nick. Hmm. Oh, what a beautiful pendant. Look stunning on me with. with. Uh, with. oh, that's so tough to say. With la earrings. Please don't steal it again, okay? One of a kind. I could just have a, a sliver of it, none. Not a block of cheese, you know. We're at least getting unique conversations this time. This is the paper the victim brought with him. Also, welcome, Calvisha. What did I join into? A travesty, Calvisha. MC Bomber, we. Oui. Does that mean something to you? None. I only speak French, Mademoiselle. But we found it behind your magazine rack. Oh, how naughty I am. I haven't cleaned for such a long time. Okay, magazine clipping is next. Um, about this. Felicitations. Miss... K-S-C-K-S-S-T? I don't know how to say it. Sorry, chat. I'm bad at French. Oh, um... Je... Je no comprehend. Nick, don't just make something up. Okay, yeah, so you've seen that one before. Okay. Do I have anything here? So we're just gonna go and look, check for... Oh, there we go. We have a new dialogue. Ooh la la. So you've eaten my lunch, we? Oui? Tell me, monsieur. Did you enjoy the lunch I prepared for you? s c s Thank you, Murphy. I'm not gonna remember that, but I'll, I'll try to look at it but if it's still there later. It was a unique and wild mixture of flavors. It was the first time I ever had lobster, you know. So this is where we learn it's lobster adjacent. Or lobster inspired, excuse me. I'm not gonna read this through again since we already talked about this one. We got new dialogue in the other ones, though. Okay, so we're gonna present the scooter, which seems to do something. What is it? Is this your scooter? No, no, I just saw it before in Vitamin Square, you see. Mandu. No, no, no. Take it away. Do not show that to me. Talk about an allergic reaction. Written by my phony. The wheel guard is all smashed up. I'm going to present the loan contract again. Nothing new here. Okay. So we're just making sure we present everything here. I don't want to accidentally skip something. We'll get through it eventually. We'll do Victor's testimony. Uh, it is true. My vases are broken all the time. 
I bought the new ones as next day after the incident. But they wouldn't let me put it on the table because of the investigation. Okay, so we're getting confirmation that indeed a vase was broken. <laughs> Would it be for the autopsy report? What does he even say to this? Alright, nothing new. So unfortunately, the achievement thing is a bit vague here. We're just gonna keep presenting things. Just to make sure we went through every possible option. If only I'd taken the right lottery ticket. I would not have any debts right now. I would be free. Look on the bright side, Mr. Armstrong. You want a dollar, right? Lack of remorse for having stolen something. Priceless. That was new dialogue. Oh, he doesn't have anything to say about the apron? Thing. Figured he wouldn't say anything about the cyanide. Think about the prescription bag, that's fair. Think about the radio. Think about the horse tickets. Think about the calendar. Alright, so then we gotta present everybody. I look based off of what the achievement is saying. Ooh la la, you have such a pretty smile, my petite chula. Who, me? We. Oui. A smile is the most important thing for us girls. Yes, Stepa? Um, sure. You have the perfect face for a waitress, you know. Um, thanks. I guess if things don't work out someday, maybe I'll be back. What things? Are you talking about her being a spirit medium? Mandu, what beauty! That's my sister! Ah, we, oui, another delight. But you have a certain je ne sais quoi that I do not sense from your sister. I do? Lothorio et I, trust out your feminine features. Oh, words I don't want to hear in Phoenix, right? Do not lose art, ma flea. You are a woman, a woman extraordinaire. Do I look like I need cheering up or something? I think that's the same as before. No comments about Godot. Present Maggie. Oh, how it hurts to see that poor girl's face. Ranger saying, as much as it would upset him, someone needs to tell him his food is terrible. Mm. He's quite a bad chef. I mean, technically somebody did. He just ignored the advice. The person that was training him, I think they said, quote, you need another 10 years or something like that. Maggie's. I heard she was super humanly unhappy. Super humanly? And if she hadn't come to work for me, she wouldn't have gotten into this mess. Huh? Missing something here, aren't I? Desu desol, Maggie, forgive me. Gordon Ramsay enters the building. Yeah, that's more accurate. Ah, oh, the dead man. The first in my restaurant. No way, you mean? First customer you ever had? No, no, no. It was the first time I've had a dead man in my restaurant. Okay, this is the same as before. We did have slightly different dialogue there for the other characters, which was interesting. Such a shame to lose a customer after only his first meal here. Oh, no comments on Gumshoe. Ah, this is an old man. He is a regular ear. I think he misunderstood it. I know he got very upset. That was in the previous uh, investigation phase. My specialty of cappuccino and cold water is one of his favorites. That just sounds so gross. Was he here at the time of the incident? We. Oui. It was here, I'm sure of it. When the incident happened, the old man was here. If we present himself to himself, it is hard to imagine, I know. But I was an apprentice for five years and... I don't know if that's supposed to be that word, but in Paris. So maybe this is the conversation I was referencing. Wow, in Paris? You're going to Ramsey, he's actually a nice guy in real life. Yeah, it's kind of like the front-facing thing. Like, it's very much hammed up for US entertainment. I mean, just look at how he does, like, the equivalency of Kitchen Nightmares in the UK versus the US. Or look how he does uh, MasterChef Junior in particular when he's working with the kids versus when he's on a show with adults or anything hosted by Fox. It's a very different uh, style, for sure. A lot of that has to do with uh, the show production. It was something like Chef there said to me that made me decide to open my own restaurant. Okay, this is exactly what we were just talking about. What was it? That awful man said to me, you must train for another 10 years. I was pretty close. 
Oh, it was such a shock, so unexpected. But you have to be a fool to do this, huh? Janiers are mostly supposed to be this. Yeah, the US version is very hammy, as is like Hell's Kitchen. Oh, I I'm definitely more of a fan of the UK style shows in general, let alone uh, specifically for him. I love how in the description for Lisa Basil, it just says at the bottom, quote, absolutely not a robot. We went through everything. So I guess I'll save over that save. And we'll proceed further. So for some reason it doesn't unlock. Well, I'm gonna head back to the precinct now. People admit they're bad and try to learn he's not <laughs> absolutely furious. Dango say, oh, hold on, we went into a big tangent. Uh, Dango says, although I'd like to hear Gordon's input about the lotions being stored in the kitchen. I mean, it just seems like he's more likely to accidentally catch himself on fire by coating himself in oil. That just seems like a really terrible idea. Well, I'm gonna head back to the precinct now. We got a big meeting starting in a bit. About Maggie's case, you mean? No, that's pretty much wrapped up now. There's another big case going down at the moment, but she's been pushed aside. Okay, well, see you later then. Bye. Yeah, he just has a problem with people like Armstrong doing better by now. Yeah, exactly. He has different expectations for, like, you should see the way he treats, like, waitresses, where he treats them with, like, respect in general. But the moment he goes up to a chef that has, quote-unquote, 20 years of ex experience and is professionally trained, how much harder he goes on them compared to some of the, uh, two chefs and things like that. So I, I would agree with that statement from, uh, Ranger and Murphy to an extent. Dot, dot, dot. Everybody dot, dot, dotting. You better get going, Detective, or you'll be late. Actually, I, um... I kinda got a favor to ask. It's a big one. A favor? Yeah. It's for, um... Maggie, actually. I was kinda hoping... You'd give this to her for me. Oh no, he's giving the equivalency of a bento box, but it's just literally rice and... Sausage slash hot dog? That is a very sad bento box. What is it? It's a lunchbox. I got up so early I could make it. Call me Ice Ranger as my dog. Sure. I've been real worried about her. She looked like she lost a lot of weight. A lot of weight. Detective Gumshoe. How many weenies are in here? There's not a person on Earth who could down this much meat. You think? I love weenies. I can't get them. Well, that's certainly a phrase out of context. I can't get enough of their tender juiciness. But will you give it to her? It took me ages to bake, so please say you will, pal. I can't exactly say no, can I? Gumshoe's lunchbox, a tenderly made lunchbox, fills the stomach with lunch and plenty of weenies. Ah, yes. The, the, typical, the typical American lunch chat right there. Take notes. So it was given to Maya to carry. Maybe I'll eat it myself if I get hungry. Don't forget, okay? I'm counting on you to give that to Maggie. He's finally gone. Well, I guess I'll go to Vitamin Square. Hmm. I don't see any sign of Mr. Kudo, do you? Oh, thankfully he's not here. Maybe he went to buy another ton of birdseed. I was kind of hoping he wouldn't be here anyway. Oh yeah, me too, Phoenix, me too. At least, not for now. Unironically, I do have Winnie's and rice every now and then. Says Dango, interesting. Besides, any more seeds today and I'm liable to turn into a real Phoenix. There we go, Phoenix with that. Ooh, what do I think the tender lender looks like? Hmm gonna be the kind of like a green building or yellow i'm trying to think what color vibe i'm gonna get from this let's find out yellow that makes sense oh oh come on you're gonna tell me this is in the u.s <laughs> what is this 
I feel like I'm playing literally Yakuza. Like, I have seen almost literally this office in Yakuza while playing this. It has, like, the like the equivalency of the scroll above the seat. It's got the desk, although the desk in this is gold. He's got the, what is that called? A Kodama? What is the doll called, chat, behind the chair? I know that has a name. Ridiculous. Also, the pink boom box is something else. January 7th, Tender Lender. This gives off a really strange vibe, doesn't it? It's almost like it's not in the U.S. Looks like the tiger isn't in his lair. And that is, as they say, a very good thing. Welcome. Phoenix gulps. Talk about a creepy voice. Makes your soul want to shrivel up and die. Oh, it must be the woman then. You're here. To discuss alone. Uh, no. Not exactly. The manager is away at the moment. Wait quietly. Please. Hmm. <laughs> She's gone. Just like that. Guess we'll just have to come back another time. But this is the perfect opportunity, Nick. This place reeks of suspicion. Come on, Nick. Take a look around, okay? You think it'd be okay? Of course. No one will ever know. Coffee. Ah! I'll leave it here for you to enjoy. Quietly. E yes, thank you. Do not touch the desk, please. Nick, let's get out of here. Now she wants to get out of here? Well, you can't not look at the CD. There's a CD player on the desk. The desk is so loud, it's a wonder you can hear it. That was like a li that was like almost on the funny scale. I'll give him that. The lid's open. I wonder what kind of music the tiger's into. Have you finished? The coffee. Ah! Yes, thanks. It was... lovely. So... You drank it all? <laughs> Ironically, as a Japanese Setsuvin tea set. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, I was, gonna, I was about to make the same comment. Dango already beat me to it. Damn, chat's too quick today. It's, yeah, the traditional American Setsuvin set. Of course, the, just everything that everybody has. I love that the sign also says win through compromise. I forgot to mention. Everybody dot dot dotting. Fire gulps. If you touch anything else that doesn't belong to you, there's always another cup. That coffee. It was laced with something. I'm sure of it. Nick, my stomach. It's killing me. Oh, wait. Maybe it was just the burger I ate for breakfast. I sure hope so. Better take a look at that CD while we're still alive and have the chance. What the? What? It's not the Rocco soundtrack, is it? Claw of the Tiger? Ooh. Oh, that, oh, that cultural reference was painful. That was painful, chat. Was it like this in the original Japanese script? I'm really curious. Blue Donna confused as usual. Welcome, Chris. Burgers for breakfast? Well, that's American at least. Yeah, not quite Eye of the Tiger. It's... It's a demo CD. The artist's name has been handwritten on the disc and pen. Is it MC Bomb or whatever? <laughs> I'm rolling my eyes on this one, chat. MC Bomber. What? Must be the CD Maggie told us about. Let's listen to it. Bet it's heavy metal. I bet it's nothing. No way. A woman will make us drink more coffee if we do. Let's see Bomber adds to the court record. Found a tender lender. Sample this with the name written in marker. Look at the punching bag. What's this? Oh yeah, Chris, we had a question. Do you know what the name of that doll is built beneath the wind through compromise? This had come up before, I believe. <laughs> I'm used to seeing those in Yakuza specifically. It's a punching bag. What? No way. You wouldn't catch me walking around with a bag like that. I was guessing it was like a Kadama doll or something. What do you mean, walking around? Oh, Daruma, my bad. The design's gross to start with, and it's way too heavy to be practical. Then why is it called a punching bag? 
Some people know messenger bags are in. I knew it. I was right before, back at Trace Vienne. Paris fashion is more my thing. I really, really hope she's pulling my chain on this one. Let's see. This round doll thing is called a Dorama. Oh, look at that. Or a Daruma. There we go. See, we did that before we investigated it. I figured I'd read a book or two and be more cultured, in case you're wondering. Yeah, I have a feeling that was not the original line of Japanese where they definitely knew what this was. You mean you aren't making stuff up for a change? Damn. Eh, I bet you also didn't... Excuse me, I bet you also didn't know that, no matter what. Always right himself. Go on, Nick. Give him a good shove. Only if I feel like dying. Now, this yellow thing. This is a Japanese chess piece. Think it's a king? A Japanese chess piece? You mean, a uh, shogi or whatever it's called? They're afraid to use its name? <laughs> Speak not its name. Do not invoke it, or else it will bestow terror upon mankind. Not that I'm an expert or anything. More of a reversey person, you know. I mean, she knows what she's talking about. These aren't exactly your typical... Mobster wannabe items. They're not trophies, are they? Are we... I'm pretty I'm pretty sure in Japanese they just straight up said Yakuza. I'm, for, I'm like 95% sure I don't think he was called Mobster. Hey, there's a piece of paper sticking out from under here. What is it? A repair bill? Looks like he did some repair work on his car. Does he even have one? Is it going to be in the tune of a million? Based off of what's happening here? We'll find out. 15,000 to replace a bumper and a light. That's insane. The car is registered to... The Cadaver Enis. The Dead Bodies. There we go. Huh? That's not even the Tiger's car? Why would someone else's repair bill be in the Tiger's office? Because he owes them? Because that's who we hit with the scooter? But also, he owes a larger bill, aside from the car. Our repair bill for 15000 paid by Tigray to the Cab Cadaverini family. It's not the king, it's the gold general. I had a feeling chat would be able to identify which piece it was. Yeah, I only vaguely recall Shogi from having played the Yakuza series. All I knew is that I was very terrible at it, and I did not understand them placing pieces midway through the game. That really confused me. I'm more used to chess where you have to reach the other end of the board to potentially swap out. But the fact that you just kind of place them in a line, I'm like, I I don't know what the strategy is to this game. And I gave up on that. Hey, look at this Parisian style code. It's so chic. It's like, looks more like a pimp coat to me. Guess I haven't got an eye for fashion. Hey, look at this. The suit is the same color as the one you wear, Nick. Hmm. Same color as my suit? Yeah, it even has the little attorney badge on it. Ah! Keep your voice down, Maya. Nick, you've got to take a look at this. Some cake? Ah! I'll just leave it here for you. Uh, yeah, sure. I, um, thanks. Just wait here quietly. Otherwise... Sh sure Did you hear that, Nick? Wait quietly, she said. Yeah, sure. I have my eye on you. Only so I can take care of you. Understand? Ah, uh, I'm scared, Nick. So, what were you getting so excited about before? Look on the lapel of the suit. Is it cardboard? Oh my gosh. That is so dumb. That's... that's an attorney badge! <laughs> Are you sure? Is the tiger a lawyer? No way! Look at this thing! It's made of paper! Paper badge added to the court record. Found a tender lender, made of cardboard, and painted to look authentic. For some reason, your badge suddenly looks really cheap to me, Nick. Why doesn't anyone, ob anyone recognize an obviously fake badge when they see one? Uh, let's look at the thing on the floor. Oh no! Someone's dropped the ashtray on the floor. Paper tiger. Mm. I don't know if that has any significance. 
I know there was like the Magic the Gathering cards where it was like Paper Tiger, Rock Lobster, and something else. The P Paper Tiger had a dumb catchphrase like, you should always know when to fold or something. Yeah, it's like a tipped over ashtray. It's gonna be a nightmare to clean up. Yeah, it's all over the rug and everything. I accidentally knocked over a really big space heater once. Cleaning up was such a pain. One of those super antiques where you have to burn a ton of charcoal. How did she manage to knock one of those over? It was supposed to be super heavy. Oh hey, there's a book of matches here too. Matches, huh? Places don't give out, give those out much now. Excuse me, let's try this again. Matches, huh? Places don't give those out much nowadays. Hey, wait a second. Paper tiger meaning something that appears threatening but doesn't have the power to back it up. Interesting. What is it? Look what's printed on its cover. It says Tres Vien. Tres Vien matches, that is the deport record. Matches used for advertising, found lying in tender lender. These matches could come in handy. I'd be able to use them. <laughs> I like to think when he says this, there's just like a thought bubble coming above his head, and then he's pictured Tris Pien, and he's just setting it on fire. <laughs> and he said, and then, <laughs> and nothing of value was lost. Yeah, the pilot light for the office spoiler keeps going out. Swing and a miss, Maya. Swing and a miss. <laughs> chat. Ironically, Paper Tires are due to some American now downplayed the atom bombs. Interesting. Ah! We're all indeed. I'm out from under the desk, Maya. What are you two snooping around in my office for? Nothing. We were just... Grr! My precious carpet. You just got ash on my rug. You was... You're gonna wish you ugly feet never came through my door. It wasn't us. He's already like, you just wanna argue with me. Is that what you was doing? You think you just can take me on? The dude is very red. Uh, it might not be. It might not be. We're, we're gonna deal with that later, chat. As I said before, this is brand new setup. It probably is missing on this scene. I'm gonna flatten you two into pancakes and turn you into my new rugs. Ah! Oh. Don Tigre, you're back. Ah, uh, that voice. Like evil seeping into your head through your ears. I'm sorry, Don Tigre. I knocked over that ashtray earlier, and... Ugh. She got a death wish or what? Oh no, that's a face I didn't want to see from this character. Oh right, huh? Forget about it, Violetta. It, it's nothing. What, what, what? I ain't gonna get mad at you. You too cute, you hear? You hear? What? <laughs> Southernism in there for some reason? That's so unfair. Here, have some cookie. I just baked them. And you'll need some strong espresso while you're discussing your loan. Ah, Phoenix Wright. Yes? He was either crazy or just plain stupid to chase after me. I worked so hard, but now you've got to come up and mess up my plan. Though it was him. He's my phony. Heh, <laughs> but I don't care. No one gets in my way. What? I, I mean, I excuse me? <laughs> you should have left the little girl at home, right? Um, how many things I want to ask? Ah, ah! No questions. This is the last time we meet. Ah, wait. Please. That was pretty weak, Nick. Wait until he was out of earshot before you shouted after him. Like you're one to talk. I didn't hear you scream hold it either. The espresso. Ah! And cookies. This woman is definitely not good for my heart. Now, what was it the tiger called her? 
Violetta. Oh, we're actually allowed to talk to her? Do we have an updated profile for her? Possibly part of the staff attender lender, a thoroughly bitter person. Interesting description. Let's go out tender lender. The dying line was almost 80% a combination of H's and A's. You're right, Calvisham. So, I'm curious about your company, Tender Lender. With the warm and friendly atmosphere you'd expect from a family-sized business. A conscientious rate of interest. And an attractive repayment policy. Why don't we get the feeling this sentence is not going to end well? We will tenderly lend you that little bit extra. Here at Tender Lender. Hey Nick, things are a bit tight for a writing company at the moment, aren't they? I mean, it's that five hundred dollars you owe me from our card game for starters. Why don't you take out a loan? I'd like to take out a loan from a place like this. Not so much. Tender Lender is on your side. <laughs> so um, let's say I'm late with my repayment. What happens then? We'd give you more coffee. Strong coffee. Um, right. I think I'd rather skip town. Murphy's saying I do enjoy the, the pun in Tender Lender. Sounds legit and trustworthy, says Chris. You wonder what music the character is like? Well, based off of what we heard earlier, I'm assuming at least some characters listen to the, the milkshake song. <laughs> At least according to the second game. They also listen to Fresh Prince. <laughs> That's what happened. So, um, you know about the incident we're investigating? What incident? Well, a man was poisoned in a restaurant just near here. That incident... Are they actually have ethical business practices? Sure, Dango, sure. Let me see. I was here that day. With the manager. The manager being the tiger? Furio, Tigre. Furio? Did Tigre? That's where the name Tiger or oh, excuse me. So that's where the tiger thing comes from. Then he hops got a real name. Nick, hurry up and find out more about him. I guess we can present. Because we just asked about him. Furio Tigre, age 42, head of Tender Letter Loan Company known as the Tiger. I ask you about the tiger? I, I mean, Mr. Tigre? Cookie? Sure? How do you like my cookie? I bake them myself. <laughs> I was gonna say, is she the person he accidentally ran into? Or maybe the accident was caused because of her? She did say that he saved her life, and we know he got into a scooter accident, and he owes money, presumably, to the... Definitely the mob, quote-unquote. Go ahead, Nick. The honor's all yours. No, no. Ladies first, Maya. <laughs> no matter how I look at this, I just don't get it. What are the tiger and the scary girl doing working together? We are lovers. That's not exactly coming across in your tone of voice. And I owe Don Tigre my life. He's the one who saved me. I was saying I was reading a translation of Ace Attorney Summer in Japanese manga from the 2004 Mother Show series. Who took him over to Phoenix had brought a punk rock album and evidently liked it by their t shirt. Thing. The tiger. Saved you? Please, address him properly as Don Tigre. Otherwise, I'll have to. Oh, okay, okay. Don Tigre, of course. I'm sorry. Saved your life. I'd like to know how that happened. Saved your life, question mark. Very frail, you see. Just recently I died once. <laughs> you, you died? About four months ago. The doctor said to abandon all hope. Oh no, the cookies have reasons. <laughs> I don't know what music I would think Phoenix listens to, honestly. I'm not even sure he understands how music works. I'm not thoroughly convinced. The only the only music I know he listens to is classic music, because he put that in his ringtone for no reason. Guess they were expecting her to take a boat ride across the river Styx. 
on Tigre. He saved me. He gave up everything. She couldn't get a PGF either, damn Dango. Everything? When I found out what he had done for me, I was happy. No offense, but I'm finding that a little hard to believe. I decided I'd pay him back with my life by serving him coffee and espresso. Are we sure she doesn't work for Godot? I mean, I feel like this is what Godot would want, Chad. I don't know about you. Don't wonder about what's in her coffee. So, is that why you've got that bandage around your head? <laughs> this advantage. Um, so what is the story with the bandage? Dot dot dots. They put it on after the operation. Operation? It's just a little injury. A little fatal injury. <laughs> a f -f -f fatal injury? I had just suffered one herself by the sound of it. Like a maid, I mean, a waitress at a fancy a French restaurant. I still can't believe they're alleging that this takes place in the U.S. Phoenix saying, so, that's the injury you're talking about. Before, when you said you had died once. I don't even think Godot would associate with a woman like her. Yeah, but he just, she just has to serve a coffee. We're still, so, okay, we're still going with the theory. He either has, an, like, a coffee machine within, like, just off-screen, like, just right out of eyeline in order to get all the coffees, and somebody has to be sending things to him, so presumably there's an assistant just loading in the cups and then sliding them across the table. Because he's definitely being passed coffee from something. Uh-oh, chat. How many locks does she have? Four? Yeah, good call. Ugh. She really creeps me out, Nick. Probably Gumshoe. Uh, I don't think that could be because he got coffee while Gumshoe was on the stand. Unless Gumshoe's repeatedly- I mean, I guess it would be funny if Gumshoe was repeatedly leaving the stand just to give him coffee. Same here. But we gotta find out the truth. Maybe use this the forest? That also could be it. So we're done with this. Oh no, is Kudo back? Please talk. Please don't be here, I don't want to talk to you. There he is! Old Seedy's back feeding the pigeons again. Damn, chat. <laughs> I really don't like this character. There, take this, and this, and get out of my park! Like I thought, he's really mad. Come on, Maya. Just keep your head down and let's sneak away while we still can. But it's some kind of technology, especially with the super programmer glasses he is on. Not quite. What? Why? Hello, old man! What are you doing, Maya? Huh? Huh. Hey, he just turned his back on us. Stop touching your nose, that's so gross. I'm not surprised. I bet I really hurt his pride in court this morning. Hey, Mr. Kudo! Hmm. Ha. Mm hmm. P -p Pigeon. Hmm. Ka. Look, we really need to talk to you, alright? Out with the demons. In with good fortune. Ow, ow, ow! Seeds! Shell splinters! Painful. I always knew you were a demon, Maya. At least he's not touching his nose currently. Hope you soon. Um, sorry about what happened in court earlier today. Ah, huh. you're gonna be talking about me behind my back now. Dirty old man, so busy looking at the servant girl's backside. Welcome, Kirk. And he can't remember her face. Filthy, depraved animal. N no, not at all. Are you listening to me, boy? I don't care what you say. Tell that waitress put it in. Put some white powder into the young lad's javachino. We hear you. Another thing. The young layabout was wearing an earpiece. On the same side as the lens of his broken spectacles. Assault isn't a crime in this universe, clearly after everything we've seen. Very true, both from prosecution side and from the defense stand, sadly. Mm. We're really sorry. I made a little mistake about the vase, so what? 
I know what I saw. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. Okay, okay, take it easy, please, Mr. Kudo. Don't tell me to take it easy, you spiky-haired brat. Take this! Embroiderer. Um, you said you were a craftsman, right? Ha! Huh. The modern world casts honest craftsmen like me aside in droves. Surely it's not that. I'm from a long line of craftsmen. Right back to the time of the Shoguns. You hear me? I didn't become an embroiderer. I was born one. Again, I think they gave up trying to translate him into English. <laughs> They're like, listen, we're we're just gonna say he's from Japan. There's just there's nothing we could do, <laughs> right, chat? They're just like, it, it's too intense. We can't just rewrite part of his backstory. Actually, I'm kind of in the same situation myself. I, I, I wanted to stick my fingers up that dribbling old judge's nose. Ew! Stop touching noses and scream right down his ear hole. Objection! Oh, so. Did you want to become a lawyer when you were young? This guy is why Ace Attorney takes place in San Francisco, maybe. Traditional American Shogun. Sorry, Nango, you're right. I don't think that's quite it, Maya. I think he's just in a bad mood, that's all. Got a tsunami of frustration inside, and it's ready to burst out. I'm gonna start rambling now. We might never shut him up again. What should I do? Uh, we'll suck it up. I guess I better let him talk, or else I don't think he's gonna talk to us. There's not much call for craftsmen these days, then. Of course not, you idiot. All I'm good for nowadays is running errands. Errands? Everyone takes advantage of the elderly. Buy some bread, Grams. Take the dog for a walk, Granddad. Feed the pigeons, old man. What am I, some sort of two-bit community handyman? Um, well? Buy some bread. Now that I can understand. Or that I can understand, excuse me. What's the point of feeding some seedy pigeons? Why don't people say what they mean? Get lost! That's what they're trying to say. You should see a doctor about the nose, says Kurt, pretty much. Oh, yes. I'm just an... I'm just an inconvenience, you see. Ew, is he eating the bird seed? What is he doing there? At home. At that restaurant. I just get in the way, don't I? I'm sure you don't. Wait a minute. What did he just say? At home and at that restaurant? Hold up. My restaurant. Are you talking about Tres Bien? Did you get asked to run an errand there too? Yes, I did. The very day that young brat was poisoned. Mm hmm. What? The errand. On the day of the incident, what were you asked to do? Glad you asked, boy. I'll tell you what I was asked to do. All of a sudden, a young lad, young lad slumped over the table. Serving girl collapsed. And I broke that vase. It all happened so fast. A little bit of a daze, you see. I hate looking at Chad and then seeing him do that animation. I, I, I want to just advance his dialogue so he stops doing it. I'll, I'll talk when he's not doing this. And the owner shouted over to me. Okay, there we go. Now I can look at chat. Guy knows definitely gets in the way. I agree. Who's a moi? You. Call the police. Call them yourself. I should have said back. But I didn't think of it at the time. So, did you end up calling the police? Like I said, I was in a bit of a daze. Did you call them on your cell phone? Ha! Huh. So it looked like I have one of those newfangled thingamajigs. Went out looking for a payphone, of course. Who knows? Went looking for one. Couldn't find one right away, you know. Wandered around for five minutes or so. But five minutes? So for five minutes after the incident happened. Yes, sir. The owner w was at Trace Beyond on his own. Why didn't you mention this in court this morning? Well, I would have if you'd given me the chance. You all bullied me out of the courtroom. I'm not repeating the dialogue in the court. Not my fault. You're the ones to blame. You could have at least told us before we got to court. Is it really that important Mr. Kudo was the one who called the police? Yes, it was. What's important is the unaccounted time before the police arrived. The victim was dead. Maggie was unconscious. Which leaves that woman. I mean- oh, Phoenix, please. 
which leaves that man alone in the restaurant. Mr. Kuno might have been chased out of the place on purpose. What do you mean? Maybe a certain someone didn't want him in the restaurant. Uh... Oh, sure. You go ahead and say it was in the way as usual. Suppose I should have been getting myself covered in pigeon poop instead, hmm? <laughs> need to get more details about exactly what happened. From Maggie. And from Mr. Armstrong. Okay. Go for Maggie first. January 7th, detention center, visitor's room. Oh, Mr. Wright! Hello, Maggie. Have they finished questioning you? Wasn't it just unbelievable in court today, sir? I'm gonna stay up all night and blog about everything that happened. Weren't you scared? Pretty touch and go in there. Yeah, but you totally nailed that old man. Well, he was all over the place with his testimony. He's not the only one. Huh? What do you mean? Everyone else's testimonies don't match up either. Not with what I remember of the incident anyway. Logging from prison. I mean, they don't seem to take weapons away from people. Somehow I'm not surprised if she somehow had a cell phone or laptop access. The police don't ex exactly strike me as confident here. Is it possible she's the one misremembering things? No, Phoenix. It literally runs contra- That is literally a contradiction to the scene before. You know this was done on purpose, Phoenix. Please don't work backwards in your logic. Of course it was on purpose. You're killing me, Phoenix. Contradictions. Maggie, you know how you said that everyone else provided testimony that doesn't match up with what you remember? Yep, there are just so many things that don't seem to add up. The biggest contradiction is the other guy I saw at the victim's table. He was the one who slipped something into the victim's coffee. I'm sure it was him. But didn't Mr. Kudo testify earlier today that it was the waitress who put some white powder into the coffee cup? Do you really think it was this disappearing man that did it? Well, he's not the only thing that disappeared. The CD vanished as well. So, okay. So if we're going back to the mirror theory from earlier. So now that now that we confirmed he left the restaurant, which I was annoyed in the first day of trial, we didn't actually talk about where he was seated to see the crime. If he saw the crime scene in the opposite side, all they would have to do was purposely prop him up on the opposite end of the restaurant, make him fall over after the fake poisoning, and then in the five minutes they just move his body back, and that's why the vase isn't broken, or something of that nature. They definitely have time to also move the mirror, in case they don't want to physically move him. So, so far, the theory is still standing. You know, the CD with the writing on it. Oh no, she definitely dressed up as the waitress. There's zero, zero down on my mind. She was the one that did it. I just thought she would have been the head of the company, not literally part of the loan office, but that's fine. Oh yeah, the MC Screwdriver album, right? No, it's MC Bomber Maya. It's MC Bomber Maya. The name was scrawled on the sports paper as well. They never did find that CD at the crime scene, sir. Or the victim's medication. That's gone missing, too. Wow, Phoenix poisoned the guy. Something like that. I'm sure he's a good witness. He's just incompetent. Oh, oof. Ouch, my head. This is getting way too complicated for me. This is getting complicated for you? What about your other cases in the second game? Those were way more convoluted. <laughs> what? What? Didn't she witness the whole circus BS? Like, wasn't that, like, absolutely ridiculous, the number of events that had to line up? This is, like, simple, comparatively. It was like, oh, the coat just magically happened to fall in such a way that it obscured the body, blah, blah, blah. That was such nonsense, by the way. I'm not getting over that case. That was so dumb. Let's ask about after the incident. You said that you passed out when the victim, Glenelg, collapsed, right? Yes. It's so embarrassing. I mean, I used to be a cop. When I came to, the restaurant was buzzing with police. And before I knew what was going on, they arrested me, sir. 
between the time the victim collapsed and the time the police arrived at the scene. You have no idea what ha what went on at Trespian. No, no idea at all. Why? Is it important, Mr. Wright? The other witness, the old man from the park, is pretty much chased out of the picture. Chased out of the picture? What do you mean? Old Seedy wasn't inside the restaurant because he was told to go call the police. Exactly. And you, Maggie, were unconscious. That means Mr. Armstrong was alone in the restaurant for a brief period of time. No. You don't think Mr. Armstrong set me up, do you? When you consider the facts, it's hard to imagine that Mr. Armstrong isn't involved in this at all. Ugh. Like the master biting the paw of the dog it feeds. Are you sure about this, Mr. Wright? Well, no man said as much when we spoke with him earlier. I don't know. Things that man says don't add up for some reason, sir. Maggie looks like she's trying to figure something out. We should ask Maggie exactly what she knows about old CD. Give me one second, Chad. Oh, I see what happened. Just do something real quick. Spin, spin! There we go. Oh, what happened to the game audio? Game audio? One second, chat. I see it playing, but then I don't hear it. One moment. Just reboot it. There we go. I think I accidentally turned off the alerts, so I just put them back on. I figured it'd be easy enough to do. Okay, so we have potentially two more topics to draw out from her. And Phoenix has the magic number of four. So I guess we will present... Hmm... What do we present? Oh, we have the lunchbox, right? We should present that first, probably. Oh yeah! I've got something you're going to love. Really? What is it? A lunchbox, just for you. Here. Wow. A lunchbox. Weenies, too. I can't believe it. Thank you, sir. Did you make this just for me, Mr. Wright? Nah. It was Detective Gumshoe. Who else would make such a nice lunchbox for you? Detective Gumshoe? He's really worried about you. Looks like he put a lot of effort into making this, too. I can't accept it. Detention set of rules. No gifts allowed, sir. Hey, come on, Maggie. Don't be like that. The rules are the rules. They'll lock you up if you break them. Somehow, when an ex-cop turned waitress says it, it seems a whole lot scarier. Detective sign. Oh yeah, chat, the alert should be active. Hopefully you heard it earlier when I tested the spin. If not, you could try again. And anyway, I hate weenies. Oh, really? It's all yours, Maya. You can enjoy it with Mr. Wright. Fireball chat. But... Dot dot dot. She's right. Better than letting it go to waste. But... I guess so. Gumshoe's lunchbox eaten with Maya. Well, how was it? That hit the spot. I love weenies. Oh good. I'm glad I gave it to you then, sir. Alright, so that's out of the way. Uh, what else do we present to her, potentially? Oh, she was asking about the the difference in the testimony. Let's present this, maybe. Ah, so much better after the trial this morning. I've been a bit of a courtroom proceeding addict for years now. It feels like forever since I saw a witness as slippery as that old man. He's not really that bad of an old man, though. Still, I feel a bit uneasy. Huh? I thought you just said you felt much better. Maggie, there's something on your mind. You gotta tell us. Especially if it has anything to do with Mr. Kuda or his testimony. Roger, I'll spill it all and see what you make of it. Okay. Sounds like we unlocked the dialogue. Victor's testimony. Is there, is there anything about Mr. Kuda's testimony that stood out as odd to you? Actually, yes. The fact that he was even testifying to begin with doesn't quite... Doesn't quite what? Well, when I took the coffee over to the victim's table, is she gonna say nobody else was in the restaurant? It's true there was another customer in the restaurant. 
Yeah, we know that already. It was Victor Kudo. No. But I can't really say. It was an old man. Okay, then how about calling him a really m old middle-aged man? No, age isn't the issue. The other customer was... A woman. A woman? Are you sure, Maggie? Well, I'm not 100% sure, but I think so. So, what did this woman look like? Um, she was sort of creepy. She had a kind of cackling laugh. Creepy? Cackling? How do I get the feeling I've come across a woman like that recently? Seriously, Phoenix? Chat, seriously? What do you mean you get the feeling? Phoenix, did you get- did you get into a car accident? <laughs> I swear we're like witnessing like the most obvious culprits and we're like, Uh, I wonder if he were- if he's related to the case. <laughs> like just... Phoenix right, ace something. <laughs> Um, do I have anything else worth presenting to her? I doubt she'll know about the flyer. Yeah, so she has nothing to say with that. Um, does she say anything about the apron? Oh, yeah. That's from when I was carrying a customer's breakfast over to them. Traditional American brain damage, maybe. The ketchup splotch, you mean. My whole face was fire engine red thanks to that stuff. But you spilled the ketchup on your apron, didn't you? I don't see how... The ketchup-covered omelet went flying and hit the customer in the face. Oh, talk about a tomato red face. Makes me wish I could have seen it myself. Yeah, I guess. It was kind of a sight to behold. Uh, so that didn't unlock any new dialogue, so I guess we go back to Trace Vian. Go to the kitchen. Looks like Mr. Armstrong's out again. The place is open for business. Can't have an open restaurant without a chef. Phoenix empty, ace nothing. Hmm. Hey, it's not my fault, Nick. Don't take it out on me. Only a couple of minutes after the incident happened, Mr. Kudo left the scene, leaving Mr. Armstrong here alone. Uh, missing when we need to talk to him the most. Maybe he's trying to avoid us on purpose. Hmm. Interesting. I guess I could go back to the detention Well... Wait, actually, how do I get back to the other place? Oh, I go from the detention center to here. I guess that's fair. Let's go back to criminal affairs. We haven't been there today. Maybe gumshoe is something of interest. January 7th, police station, criminal affairs department. The main server just went up in smoke. Why the heck isn't the press conference set up yet? The superintendent's here already. Yeah, and there's a problem with the internet, too. I already told you to stop using your computer, Chief. But I'm watching videos online. I'm catching up on my Asian soap operas. I love that it's specifically Asian soap operas. They could have just left it as soap operas, but they want you to know, chat. It, it has that same kind of energy as, like, Metal Gear Solid. It's just like one of my Japanese animes. It has that same vibe to it, chat. It really does. Gonna have to wait, ch Chief. I'm throwing the switch. No! Just when some young guy... Really? Some young guy? Really? Was about to confess to his son's hot-to-trot girlfriend. Wow. This place is really buzzing. Something must be going down. Something really big. Huh? What are you doing here, pal? Oh dear, says Fludana. That seems accurate. Detective Gumshoe. You can't be here right now. You'll be roped into the briefing if you stay. Huh? We've got big problems here today. Why? What's going on? <laughs> Fludana on point. Thank you, Fludana, says the chat. Yeah, that name was something. Why? What's going on? It's a virus. A virus? A virus? There's a virus ripping through the precinct's computer system. I really need to ask you some questions. Let's talk. Enderlander. Okay, I'm only gonna say this once, so listen up. Yes. No matter how poor you get, never borrow money from this- from a place like this, you hear? Um, okay. 
you got money trouble, just go on a diet of instant noodles and hang in there. <laughs> it's the T-Virus. I don't know about that. Uh, we're not thinking about borrowing money, Detective. We want information. Oh, is that all? Let me see. Under Lender is considered to be even fishier than the average illegal loan shark. It seems it ran into trouble just recently. Yep, they, I imagine they have a million dollar debt. I, I'm waiting for them to say it, but they haven't confirmed it yet. Those guys have been pretty heavy-handed calling in all their debts. Yep. Really? Don't go poking your nose around in their business, pal. You'll really regret it if you upset that lady. Okay, so we can present the lady to him maybe for more info. Alright, I get the picture. Hey, wait a minute. What did he just say? That lady. Who's this lady he's talking about, Nick? Are they having, like, amnesia? <laughs> they're like, we go to Tender Lender, then we talk to one other person, and they're like, who did we talk to? <laughs> Is it one of those things they can only have, like, three facts in their head at any given moment? Are we secretly the protagonist in, like, Memento or something? <laughs> like, seriously? There's like three women we've talked to total in this case so far. How are how are they not sure which woman they're talking about? We better find out what the story is with this lady. Computer viruses. So what exactly is a computer virus, Detective Gumshoe? I don't know. What? Look, I just go with the flow, all right, pal. Here I thought detectives were supposed to be somewhat knowledgeable. To be fair, they did take a blow to the head. Oh, that's true. I think it's supposed to be just in case you do each day in whatever order. Maybe. What's with that face, pal? You think you know what a virus is? Well, Nick, do you? Computer virus, sure. I mean, only in simple terms, of course. Really? Wow, you know everything, Professor Nick. Yeah, I'm gonna call you Dr. Wright from now on. That, like a almost a Mega Man one. Hey, that sounds pretty cool. Don't you agree, Doctor Wright? I don't get the feeling they're making fun of me. Okay, fine. I'm no expert, but at least I can explain the basics to the two of you. What's a virus? A virus is a program that gets inside a computer and causes damage. Damage? You mean it makes the machine go boom and explode? No, the damage is um. Well, it's all internal. So the inside goes boom, right? Actually, funny enough, sometimes that can happen. If you if you cause it to overheat, it can melt down, depending on what the virus actually does. Funny enough, they're, I know they're making a joke here. But just run at max processing speed and burn out all the cards. <laughs> melt the soldering. Imagine all the case data you got stored on your PCs here in the station. The virus could wipe all that out. It's the kind of damage I'm talking about. I was alert by Weird Al. Weird Al, maybe. Whoa, that's scary. Yeah, it's even more scary is the viruses are infectious. Infectious? Most computers are connected together on a network, right? The virus can move from one machine to another one over the network. The virus just keeps spreading faster and faster. Hmm, just like a real virus, huh? But Nick, why would anyone want to make a program like that? Yeah, it takes ages to type in all that data. Why would you want to destroy it, pal? No, people don't infect their own machines. They send the viruses to someone else's. What? That's horrible. Oh, I get it. It's like you sneezing on Mr. Godot so he catches a cold. Right, and he wouldn't be able to turn up in court because he'd be too sick. You really shouldn't do stuff like that, Nick. It's wrong. Who? What? Where? When and why did the conversation jump to talking about me? Anyway, th that's what a computer virus is. A bad program that causes damage. And all the different viruses have names, right? I kind of feel like I've heard the name of the virus we caught somewhere before. Gchat. It could be any virus name at all. Any virus name at all. It could be anything. The name of the virus, huh? I feel like I've heard it before, too. Uh, let's present the lady first. That's the girl who works over at the Tender Lender. You want to stay away from her, okay? I mean it. 
She does look kind of unforgiving, doesn't she? And that should be the least of your worries, pal. What's that supposed to mean? What could be worse? Her name's Viola Cadaverini. Oh, okay. So, I'm still not entirely unconvinced he didn't cause her to have the accident. I'm not fully convinced. She's the only granddaughter of Bruto Cadaverini. Oh my gosh, that guy on the right. Holy. <laughs> They're not even gonna... Don't even pretend that isn't just straight up uh, Japanese. Bruto Cadaverini. You know who that is, Nick? Yeah, the most American, exactly. Never heard of him. Bruto Cadaverini's the boss of the Cadaverini family. The Cadaverini's. One scary sounding name. We can't touch them. They're way too powerful for the police. The traditional American y Yakuza boss. Exactly. But you're thinking of taking them on, aren't you? No, I don't remember saying I was going to. Better get some more info out of Gumshoe about this family. Alright, let's present the FC Bomber. Detective Gumshoe, um, about this. Ah! This is it, the stupid name. I remember now. I thought so. Here it comes. Don't just nod yourself and keep me in the dark, Nick. What's going on? Yeah, the, the name's real subtle, Kirk. It's okay, Maya. You don't have to cry about it. The name scribbled on that sports paper and written on that CD. I guess I could have presented the sports paper, too. That's the name of the virus, MC Bomber. What? Yeah, the virus that's just infected every computer in the station, pal. The MC Bomber. Can you give us any more details, please? What? What can this mean? What could this mean indeed, chat? We already knew about the MC Bomber virus from what? a while back. A group of criminals issued a series of demands to the head honchos of law enforcement. They threatened to release the virus if their demands weren't met. Who are they? I don't know. Some hot hotshots from the criminal underworld would be my guess. Oh, chat, since... Sorry, I had something blocking the upper left-hand corner of my window. For the, for the what thing, did the image pop up in the upper left? I had something overlaid at the time. I didn't see what it was. Yeah, in every computer and every public office in the city. Okay, I just wanted to make sure, because the alerts were acting weird earlier. Everyone's going nuts. They're hopping around like they're dancing at a carnival. All this stuff with criminals and viruses. It almost feels like we're in a sci-fi movie. Okay, thank you, thank you. Apparently, the program who made the virus was a real genius or something. The focus right now is on tracing the route of this virus on the black market. I mean, someone put this virus up for sale? Yeah. Because this one's so powerful, they're estimating its price tag was in the millions of dollars, pal. There we go. In the millions? A virus could be worth that much? The bomber updated the court record. Contains a computer virus. There we go. Now we might be able to go back to the tender blender. Um... You didn't get a dialogue. Oh, the cat. Oh, there sorry, this one unchecked itself. I'm not sure if I really want to get involved in this, but but who are the Cadaverinis? Who are they? A scary bunch of people, that's who. You're a cop and you're scared? What's that about? Oh my odds of Phoenix on that one. Trust me, it doesn't matter if you're a cop or a kid. These guys are scary. They got some serious clout in the criminal underworld. You can't touch them. They've got too much moolah. <laughs> The, the use of moolah after all the ridiculous thing people say. I wasn't ready for it. Moolah. As in, they pretty much control all the cash on the city's black market. Black market, huh? And that includes Tender Lender, I take it. Sure, no one stands up to Bruto Cadaverini. And I mean no one. Phoenix Wright's Japanese name is Ryuchi Naruhoto. Interesting. Oh, Viola's the granddaughter of some mafia boss, then. Yeah, and everyone knows how much Bruto loves his little girl. It means everything to him. So, how did she end up at the Tender Lender? 
I don't know, pal. I heard she and the boss of Tender Lender are pretty tight. Now Rohoto is Japanese for I get it. Mm. I have heard that used a lot when I listen to shows. Along with Nani. They love that. They love those phrases. That and Yamuro. That's what it said in a file I read related to Maggie's case. Sounds like a pretty important clue. Ah, oh, I can't believe it. I almost forgot the most important thing. A and that is... You know, the lunchbox. How did everything go? Comedy music kicks in. The lunchbox? You remember. The weenies? I really like to think that we've been in an accident and she's genuinely concerned about her mental health here. Don't flash back to this. That was like two scenes ago. So, how did my... I don't like your phrasing, Gumshoe. I'm gonna rephrase your sentence. How's that? I'm not gonna say what he wrote. How did my meal taste when they went down the hatch? Huh? Um, well, it was delicious. Yeah, that's what she said? Really? Um, well, not exactly. Don't worry about it, pal. I figured something would happen, so I came prepared. Prepared? What do you mean? I made a jumbo lunchbox. Oh. Do me a favor again, huh, pal, and deliver this? It sure is a heavy burden. In more ways than one. I just imagine Maggie's little eyes sparkling with joy when you bring her that. He needs again, Nick. Tell me we don't have to eat all these, too. Wow, Maya complaining about eating food? Gumshoe's lunchbox given to Maya again. Tenderly handmade lunchbox fills the stomach with love and plenty of weenies. Really can't eat anymore. She's not here to give it to. Go here. Guess I go back. Actually, do I have enough for the other one? Hmm. Might not have enough for her. Actually, you know what? I changed my mind. I originally was going to talk to her first. Oops. I got baited by the positioning. I think I might be able to get something out of blue screens first. She had less locks. So she might give me what I need to present to the other character. As we know about, uh, we did get an update on Glenn's troubles, which might go back to the Tender Lender, because he might have had money troubles, so that might be the final piece I need for the Tender Lender. Not even taco weenies. So I, I guess we're ready? I think we have everything. Take that. So I'm assuming by the, the troubles, we're gonna learn about his debt, and that'll be the final lock that we need on the other person. That way we can finally get Phoenix to realize that the two things are related. Lens troubles. So, how about you tell me about what kind of trouble Mr. Elg was in? I'm sorry, sir, but we don't deal with troubleshooting here. Perhaps you'd like to speak to someone in customer service. What's she talking about? I guess I better just take a shot and see where it gets me. Miss Basil, let me ask you something. Mr. X trouble have something to do with this? Imagine we present the millions of lottery tickets he lost. Take that. Take that! What is that? Bunch of horse racing tickets. All losing ones. With that many tickets, you could get one dollar at the recycling center. You good people are very, very bad. Cashing in on others' misfortunes is immoral. Is that a whiff of hypocrisy I smell? But what is the relevance of these tickets? The victim, Mr. Glenn L. He had, a grant he had a gambling habit, didn't he? I don't think that's a logical conclusion based on facts. Everyone likes to go to the races from time to time. Wouldn't the sheer amount of them be proof? Yeah, but not everyone buys this many tickets. At least Phoenix thought the same thing. Anyway, I don't believe that proves anything on its own. Yes, <laughs> exactly. I'm just like... It, everybody buys something from time to time and like all of them are stamped from like three weeks ago. 
of the massive pile. You're right, but I'm not through yet. Mr. Alex's gambling problem wasn't restricted to horse races, was it? Um... I guess I just immediately present Furio Tigre. I can't think of what else I would present here. Nope. Okay, so that's not it. Alright, so I need to, I still need to can't get him there. Huh. So what is what, what do I need other than Furio Tigre here? Do I have to present the calendar? Or do I present the lottery ticket? Maybe the lottery ticket? The lottery, horse racing. He bought a lot of tickets and lost a lot of times. That's gotta have hurt his wallet pretty bad, don't you think? Maybe bad enough to be the cause of some pretty serious trouble, perhaps. No! You are right. Len did have a gambling habit. You good people must not follow his example. Do you understand? Trust me. But if I wanted to, I don't exactly have the money to buy any. But if you win, there's no problem, is there? And Glenn had a winning ticket, didn't he? For half a million dollars? Yeah, but... It's hard to imagine how he could have been in trouble then, isn't it? It's true that Mr. Elg won half a million dollars. In the end. That was... That was his first stroke of good luck. He was in deep trouble before that. Deep trouble? What do you mean? She looks like she has a TikTok text to speech. Maybe. Problem was with someone or something more terrifying and ferocious. Okay, so now I th now I can present this. I was one step ahead of the game. Take that. Take that. Rio Tigre, the boss of a loan office called Tender Lender. Tender Lender. People with businesses should think harder before naming their offices. Like you're one to talk. Well, what do you think? Our firm is doing very well at the moment. I don't think we need to borrow money. No, no, no. I mean about Mr. Elg. You think Glenn had something to do with this Furio Tigre? Yes. I'm sorry. I don't know of any connection between the two of them. Really? Because I got proof that Mr. Elg and the Tiger knew each other. Okay, so now I can present the calendar. Take that! Furio Tigre, aka the Tiger. The boss of the loan office called Tender Lender. This is who Mr. Elg met with on the day of his murder. And the only thing a loan shark would talk with him about would be his debt. No! It's true. I love that when she screams, like, the little headset moves out of the way. It's true that Glenn had racked up quite a bit of debt from his gambling habit. About $100,000, I think. $100,000? Ouch. But I heard he won the lottery, so he should have been in the clear. Jim Maggie couldn't get in a bit of that good luck. Okay. The guy got lucky and won the lottery. But what if he hadn't won? What was his plan then? Well, this isn't easy to say, but he said he would use his talents to repay the money. His talents? I suspect he was talking about... Oh, excuse me. I suspect... He was talking about programming. What computer program is worth $100,000? She screams, is over $9,000, you'll buy the game, oh no. Perhaps you good people should leave, so I could get back to my work. I'm so close to cracking her. The program in question, is it by any chance this? Dramatic reveal of the MC Bomber. Take that! Take that. Well, this is it, isn't it? This is the virus that's infecting computers worldwide as we speak. MC Bomber. No! There we go. Took a little damage, but we recovered. Lens troubles. Lens head had more processing power than any computer. Well, maybe back then. But it had been infected with a gambling virus. Len was in too deep. You mean he was in debt? Yes, $100,000 in debt. Not an easy amount to repay. So, 
He said he was taking on some extra work. Something a bit risky. Risky? How? Maybe he was going to become a waitress at Trespian. That was... Okay, that was a little funny. Where do you come up with these ideas? Risky extra work. So it's safe to say Mr. Elg was the creator of this virus, huh? MC Bomber virus, yes. It was a work of genius. In a bad sort of way, of course. But still genius. Something like that would probably fetch several million dollars on the black market. Inconceivable. Gumshoe was right for a change. Damn, chat. That's some gumshoe hate right there. This date, December 3rd, that is marked on his calendar. That was his deadline for repaying his debts. The bomber updating the court record. Guess we won't be needing this horse these horse racing tickets anymore. Glen Elg's losing tickets thrown back on the floor. Wow, we didn't even put them in a trash can? We're so inconsiderate. Use the trash can, Nick. Yeah, Maya, you're actually right for once. We just literally dumped it on the floor and left. That is so rude. Wow. We're like... I, I, I don't want to play with you anymore. And we just jumped it just in a big pile. Now I think we could go to Tender Lender. So now we should be good. So she's got four we gotta get through, but now the MC Bomber is updated, so that might be enough to get us through this. Hmm. Oh, apparently there's another achievement we could go for. I'm glad I double-checked my notes. The head bandage. Chad is gonna love how we get this achievement. You said the bandage around your head was from an operation. You dot dot dot. You also said you suffered a fatal injury to the head, correct? Yes. The operation was very... difficult, apparently. Now, by fatal injury, you mean you were hurt very badly somehow, right? <laughs> Did the injury in question have something to do with this? Chat. This is for you. Well? Donuts? Huh? I bake them myself. Homemade donuts. Have one. Um, what's inside? Jam and... I'm sorry, but I didn't quite catch that. <laughs> um, thanks, but no thanks. I think I'll pass. I guess that was a flop. But we needed to be presented donuts. We get the achievement, Violetta's Homemade Donuts. What happened to this woman for her to have such a huge bandage around her head? There must be some piece of evidence that will prompt her to tell me what happened. Oh no, it literally popped up the achievement while I was playing. That's funny. I don't think Chad saw it, though. She tried to hold four thoughts in her head at once. I'll see you fry donuts. Alright, so let's actually present the... Where's the bill we got earlier? This. Take that! Take that! I have here a car repair bill. From this, it seems pretty obvious that this car was involved in an accident. Let me see that. This bill is made out to the... the Davarini. Yes, it is. I don't think... I ever introduced myself. Tell me, what do the Cadaverinis have to do with me? Something tells me she's not about to say hi and introduce herself. Alright then. The relationship with the Cadaverinis is very strong. And this is why. Do we just present her father? Or present her... I guess I... I what happens if I... I guess I just present her, because that's her last name. Question mark. Take that. Take that! I know exactly who you are, Viola Cadaverini. You sustained that injury in a traffic accident, didn't you? You dot dot dot. It happened about four months ago. I was driving in one of our family cars when someone pulled out in front of me. Yeah, it's definitely the scooter. It was a motorbike or something like that. I don't remember it much. Did she forget that he was the one that caused the accident? I guess? 
I mean, I guess she did sustain a head injury, to be fair. I kind of thought this was the case, to be honest. Anyway, I swerved to try to avoid it, but... Boy, is she not going to be happy when she learns the truth later. I took a blow to the head. A bad one. Yeah, I can imagine. But what happened to the person on the bike? I'm guessing they didn't get away with injuring THE Viola Cadaverini, right? I don't know what happened to them. They ran away. Or so I heard. Ran away? If they'd stayed, I'd have... <laughs> <laughs> hmm, is it possible? The person who committed the hit and run then... I mean, I just present Tigre here, right? Take that. Take that! It was this man, wasn't it? He was the cause of your accident. It wasn't Don Tigre. I refuse to believe it. Well, I mean, we could just present the scooter. I mean, it's literally the same scooter. We collided. The motorbike. And my car. But Don Tigre isn't injured at all. Is he? The tiger caused Viola to crash. I can feel it! Plus, one of her locks just broke. But she must suspect it was him, too. Okay. I guess he acknowledged that. I'm sorry, Miss Cadaverini. But I have proof that the Tigre was involved in a traffic accident on his bike. By literally just presenting the bike, right? Because it's still destroyed. Take that! Take that! Not exactly a motorbike, but... Mr. Tigre rides around on a scooter, doesn't he? You'll notice the front wheel guard is badly damaged. Miss Cadaverini. You know the truth, don't you? <laughs> the repair bill was paid by Furio Tigre. The Daverinis must have known for ages who caused the accident, haven't they? It's possible, perhaps. Somewhere inside me, I know that may be true. I knew it. But, Don Tigre still saved my life. The operation was very complicated. It was very, very expensive. How much are we talking? Come on, say a million. Say it. Very, very, very expensive. Seems kind of hesitant about giving me an actual figure to back off. Well, anyway, the Tiger who paid for it, right? After I recovered, Don Tigre told me. He said he paid for the operation because he cared about me. I believe him. Really? You honestly believe this to be true? Do you want to know what I think? I think the reason he paid for the operation wasn't because of you, but someone else. Uh, her father. Take that! Take that! Perhaps I shouldn't be saying this, but... Your grandfather, Bruto Cadaverini, controls a lot of... Dubious cash, right? And you are his beloved pride and joy. Sure, I don't know exactly how much the operation costs, but... If you weren't the granddaughter of Mr. Cadaverini, you think Mr. Tigre would have paid the money? One million dollars. Nice, it was a million. Damn, chat, I'm on the money, literally. Head bandage. Four months ago, I was in a traffic accident. That's why I needed the operation. When I woke up, they told me it was nothing serious. A simple procedure. Oh, really? Well, I guess if she recovered in four months, it would have been too big. They said the operation cost one million dollars. Uh, a uh, a million bucks? My grandfather ordered Don Tigre to pay. One million dollars. In compensation. Compensation, huh? It's underworld lingo for paying money to settle a score. Basically, pay or get into some serious trouble. A million bucks? This has to be related to our poisoning case somehow. I feel like that's like the facepalm moment. Yes, Phoenix. It has everything to do with the current case that you're on. It, it, I mean, him him also being dressed up as the attorney should also be a clue. Ask about the compensation. 
I wanted to believe him. I wanted to trust what Don Tigre said. He said it had nothing to do with my grandfather being Bruto Cadaverini. I wanted to believe he helped me, because he cared about me, not about my grandfather. Oops, single tear. I knew that wasn't really true. Wow, I'm so sorry. What he did to get the money was, it was evil. He said it was all for me, so I, I helped him. You helped him? In what way? Here, take these. What are these? Medical papers. I'm Bruto Cadaverini's granddaughter. He had to pay compensation. He was made an offer. He simply couldn't refuse. He his medical papers added to the court record. A million dollar bill for cranial surgery. Payment was due last year. Wow. Feels so bad for Viola. Inexcusable. Huh? There are two things that I consider inexcusable. Oh boy. Thank you for sticking around, Kirk. Hopefully you get some rest. Poisoning and betrayal. <laughs> That's so specific. Why, po why poisoning, though? Why is that bef- Oh, okay. Only a coward would hurt people using either of these tactics. I mean, does bribery get in there? Or blackmailing? Is everything alright, Nick? We should get going. Right after we finish our espresso. Yeah. I won't need to convince Viola of anything else, so I guess I could get rid of this. Repair bill thrown into the, the trash. Oh, now we acknowledge where the trash can is? Whatever. Guess we'll move on. Is the other guy back from Trace Vienne? Eh, bonjour. I've been waiting for you to return. Mr. Armstrong? Ah, oh, good timing. I was hoping to find you were here. I'd ask you a few questions. Well, he's not- he- Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> well, he hasn't got anything to say to you, fellas. Ah, oh, it's in Iha. Who are you calling Zinni Upe? Ah! I'm out from under the table already, Maya. Okay, hand it over. What? You just want to play games with me? I don't recommend that. The medical papers, now! Uh-oh. I think he wants to be able to Cadaverini's papers back. Y you mean this? The million dollar medical paper? Miss, Miss Cadaverini trusted you. That's why she said that she'd helped you. Forget about it. The girl's dumber than an eggplant. You just want to know what's sad? I tell you what's sad. It ain't only her face. I think she's got power because she's Bruno's little girl. Now that's sad. I can't let you have these papers. Tomorrow in court, I'm going to expose what you did to get the one million you used to pay this off. Are you crazy or something? I don't care if you want to give it to me or not. There's two of us here, you got that? Two. Er, uh, we, oui. we, oui, we, oui. Mr. Armstrong, forgive me, Desole. I cannot argue with them. Ah, uh, that really hurt. Is that all you's got? I'll be taking those papers now. Armstrong, get that lighter. Wait, don't take it too hard. Phoenix, right? That was so stupid. I shouldn't have let my guard down. Those medical papers were vital evidence. Hold it, pal. D Detective Gumshoe? Detective? You would think you was gonna stop me, copper? Beat it. Grr! Whoa! Come on, Gumshoe, keep it together. You guys, get out of here. Leave this guy to me. But... Go, pal, and take this. Oh, I never went back to the detention center to give the food over to her. Was I supposed to do that earlier? You get hurt. 
Who's gonna look after Maggie, huh? All right, thanks, Gumshoe. Wait, Nick, don't leave me behind. I'll get even. I'll get even with that guy tomorrow. In court, Thunder Lender is going down. So we're finally at the trial. So we have ways I can back up in case I miss an achievement, so I guess I'll keep going. January 8th, 9.46am, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Good morning, Mr. Wright. Good morning, Maggie. So, what do you think is gonna happen today, sir? Yesterday's session didn't go so well and ended on a giant mystery. That's true. We still haven't solved a single part of it yet. Are you okay, Nick? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, of course. I saw that, that little flash of doubt in your eyes. No. Oh, uh, that wasn't doubt. That was, uh, determination. Oh, no. I would have said this is a reference, but this came out before that game. Why don't I believe you? It's nearly time, Maggie. You better get going to the defendant's seat. Roger. Don't let me down, Mr. Wright. I'm counting on you. Hey, pal. Hey, Detective Gumshoe. Quit stressing Maggie out. She doesn't need that. Hundred Tales Beyond Time, maybe. How did you know she was stressed? I still haven't played that game, technically. I was watching through the doorway. Oh. You look like you lost the case already. Show a bit of confidence, will you, pal? Here. Maybe this'll help. Huh? Have you taken up aromatherapy too? No, it's the bottle we gave to them the other day. Not in a million years, pal. Don't tell me you don't remember this thing. Again, I really think we suffered brain damage at some point. Hmm. Come to think of it, it doesn't look like one of those aromatherapy bottles. Phoenix, you literally gave them the evidence like two days ago. I really think they sustained some head injury, chat. <laughs> like, that's my ongoing theory. This is a small bottle that turned up in Trace Band's kitchen a couple days ago. Yeah, we plucked it out of the little ones on the bottom. And it doesn't have a smell. We finally got the analysis results back from the lab. So, what is it? Is it the poison? I'm afraid not, pal. It's... medication. Uh, I guess that makes sense. Medication? Yeah. Oh yeah, because we weren't sure whether or not it would be poison through powder or liquid back then. I just never thought about it again since we gave it away. Yeah, for ears. Topical use only, apparently. For ears, you mean... Yeah, it's the medication Glen Elg was use using for his ruptured eardrum. What Elg's ear medicine doing in the kitchen? Small bottle refiled into the court record. Victim's ear medicine found covered in unidentified fingerprints in the kitchen. Hmm... Um, what about the unidentified fingerprints? Anything on that? Someone screwed up, so they only get time to analyze the contents of the bottle. Another hour and they might have gotten something on the prints, but... Hmm. It's gonna weaken its impact as a piece of evidence. Okay, pal, that- this is it. Make sure your defense is impregnable today, got it? Today's trial. I'm gonna expose that guy- I love that it's in red letters- for what he's done. Or my name isn't Phoenix Wright. No, no, no. We all know it's Phoenix wrong. January 8th, 10 a.m. Just a court. Courtroom number four. Bang. Taking that moment to rehydrate, because I know the judge's voice gets me sometimes. Give me another moment. Court is now in session. For the trial of Maggie Bird, or Meiji Bird, excuse me. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Oh, the coffee begins, chat. Ready and waiting as always, Your Honor. Very good. Then we'll get underway at once. Yesterday, we heard the testimony of Mr. Victor Kudo. He claims to have witnessed the defendant putting a powder into the victim's coffee. However, 
your witness's testimony was played with a number of problems. I was gonna say, is there a default coffee emote in Twitch? Never looked before. The mark on the rim of the cup shows that the victim drank from it with his right hand. But according to the old man's testimony, he picked it up with his left hand. Thank you, Mr. Godot. Furthermore, according to the witness's account, the victim was listening to the radio with an earpiece in his left ear. Yet, the victim's left eardrum was ruptured, which made him effectively deaf in that ear. Amazing how many contradictions a single case can have, huh, Nick? Ah, allow me to enlighten you, your honor. Does the coffee emoji count? I think so. The world, you see, keeps turning, and we must turn with it. You've lost me already, Mr. Godot. Don't let the mysteries of yesterday, or yesterday mystify you today. Only losers think like that. You've got to change with the times. That's one of my rules. Are you implying that you've resolved these contradictions? You know the answers to these riddles? Your guy wasn't just throwing seed in here. He was throwing us off the scent. And today, I'll prove it. Very well. Let the first witness take the stand. And you are... Oh, bonjour, everyone. I'm John Armstrong, the owner of and Ed Chef of La Tres Bien Restaurant. Enchanté. I think that's how you say that. Dot, dot, dot from everybody. Why is he got a pose like that? Forgive me for asking witness, but are you a woman? Wow. That would not fly today, chat. That would not fly today at all. Ooh la la, monsieur. As you can see, I am the pert and perky gentleman, none? Er... Uh, um... On the day of the incident, you were in Trace Bien's kitchen. Doom for harassment, chat. Isn't that right? With you, monsieur. Everything feels right. Ew, gross. Don't hit on the prosecutor. Oh, coffee plus one. Oh. Wow, he's totally unfazed. Doesn't anything intimidate this guy? Bang. Very well, your testimony, please, witness. Please tell the court what happened that day at Tres We oui. volunteers. At Tres Bien, witness testimony. When it all happened, there was just two customers in my restaurant. I remember I was experimenting with the new art decos that day. Like having a large mirror between the tables, for example. Oh, there we go. Chat. Ding, 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 ding. It's a mirror. <laughs> of course. Well, this case is solved. We oui, perhaps that is what the old man was looking at. La cup, the earpiece, and the glasses. He would have seen everything in reverse, none. Are you sure he's unfazed? How you can tell with the huge visor? Maybe by his mouth. But mirror? We oui. Und grand mirror. The most enormous mirror. <laughs> Suddenly, the mystery disappears. Like I said, the world keeps turning, so roll with it. Hmm. That would explain the coffee cup and the earpiece conundrum. The mirror would have made everything appear back to front. What the heck? It's way too early in the morning for this to be happening to me. Bang. Now then, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Uh... I think for the achievement, I need to press him on everything. But I will tell you which one I think is actually relevant to the plot. Hold it! And who were the two customers, exactly? Place, of course, the young man who died. And the other, not-so-young man. Hmm. 
You were referring to yesterday's witness, I presume. What about the other man Maggie says she saw at the other table? Don't you mean the other woman? Oh, oh, that table. Yeah, that's fair. Something tells me Mr. Armstrong isn't planning to disclose his existence. We need some hard evidence first before we can bring him up, don't we? Guess I'll just have to try a different approach for the time being. Alright, so let's ask about the mirror. You were experimenting with Art Deco? How come I never heard about that before today? Yeah, you would think that would have been a very important point to bring up. You are not familiar with this language of interior design, Monsieur. Please stay on topic. And why didn't you tell the court about this before? But I did, just a few moments ago. Ahem. Excuse me, Mr. Armstrong. This deco you mentioned, are you referring to some sort of... Deco, sure. No, no, art deco. The style of design, your honor. I'm talking about interior design. Walls, ceilings, carpets, that kind of thing. <laughs> if I roll with it, it means don't question it, please, pretty much. Oh, yes, of course, that deco. I was trying to achieve more la effeminate look for my restaurant. I was planning the most bold remodeling of le decor. Let's ask about the large mirror. Hold it. How big of a mirror are we talking about here? Buff. Buff? Something about four meters wide and, uh, we about two meters high. Let's see. Two meters about one yard. Holy glass in a frame that's huge. I was intending to install it on the ceiling eventually. Yeah, buff. The ceiling? Is there a mirror on the ceiling? I don't remember. Yeah, you wouldn't let me look for the mirror, you jerks. My snan, I decided not to go through with it in the end. What should I do? Ask him more about the mirror or not? Sure. You really had such a large mirror in the restaurant. Someone should have noticed it. There's nothing about a mirror in Mr. Kudo or Maggie Bird's testimony. But, but you didn't ask, right? You have only yourself to blame for such sloppy work. What? Mia was delivered to Trispian the day before the incident. Really? Mr. Armstrong testified, carrying out some design changes. As it turned out, he didn't actually use the mirror in the end. It just doesn't add up. The mirror was delivered to Trispian. Doesn't prove that it was in the restaurant on the day of the crime. Huh. I want to doubt someone tried. Look in the mirror. I'm sure the person looking back at you will be dubious enough. Hmm. Though the witness yesterday had seen the victim reflected in a mirror. Let's press the statement. Normally, I'd expect people to know the difference between a reflection and a real object. Objection. Objection. Normally. How does normality come into this? You know what? <laughs> that is such a true statement in the Phoenix Wright universe. What is anything normal? That's lame, Trite. Even for you. Huh? Are you trying to say that if something isn't normal, it isn't possible? Is that it? Well, where does that leave the... Oh, excuse me. Where does that leave the porky-headed lawyer? And the top-knot chick over there? And the ungodly cool guy with the mask over here? Well, Trite... There we go, chat. Ungodly cool. Ah! Not the hair! I do not have a top knot. Mr. Godot is correct. A lack of normality is no basis for discounting an argument. Bien. Logic has won the day. La cup, la earpiece, and the glasses would have seen everything in reverse. Okay. So... I know this is really stupid, but we know the other guy's name is a palindrome, so we know it should be the same. It feels like we're really nitpicking this argument, to be honest. But whatever. Hold it! Everything? You would have seen everything in reverse? We. Oui. Hey, Nick. You should take a second think about what the old CD said in his testimony. How did he phrase it again? Boy oh, was wearing the earpiece on the same side of the green lens. No question, you can lock me up if I'm wrong. It was his left ear. And he used the same hand to pick up the cup, his left hand. Well, everything described reflected in a mirror. Everything he said on the left was actually on the right, huh? Yes, that's how mirrors work, Maya. I 
clears up all the problems with his testimony, I guess. Or does it? Huh. Kind of hard to believe everything's the fault of Emir, but... You don't see he saw everything through a reflection? If he did, it would explain all the contradictions in his testimony. That just makes the situation worse for Maggie. There's gotta be something in the old man's testimony. Gotta dig deeper. Again, this feels like nitpicking. I feel like technically, like, it, it, the name would be in reverse. It's just the reverse of a mirror. It feels like a very stupid gotcha question. But whatever, we'll present his name, I guess. Objection! Objection! Wow, it really is the solution. The coffee cup, the earpiece, and the HMG. Let's think back over Mr. Kudo's testimony for a second, shall we? The same side of his specs. No question will lock me up if I'm wrong. It was his left ear, no doubt. So to summarize, we we're told both the HMD and the earpiece were on the victim's left side. Now, Mr. Kudo saw all that as a reflection in a mirror. Means both the HMD and the earpiece were actually on the victim's right side. Yeah. Exactamente. You see, Monsieur, how's that you think about it? It's not so hard, none. Unfortunately, that's where we run into a monumental contradiction with the facts. Mr. Kudo really did see everything in a mirror. Why is it the HMD is now on the wrong side of his head? I mean, does he have to wear it on that side of his head? Do we do we know that for a fact? I feel like I know it's in his profile image, but it I mean nothing says he couldn't wear it on the other side, right? Whatever. Whatever, let's not dwell on that for too long. Order, order, Mr. Wright is correct. If the witness generally observed the victim reflected in a mirror. Maybe? Then we would expect the victim's eyepiece to have been over his right eye. Objection! Objection. How bitter. Right, you should have a taste of this bitterness. It'll calm you down in no time. Are we talking about your coffee? Or something completely different? There we go. You don't understand the way the witness thinks. How he thinks? Remember this, I presume. Uh, I broke the vase. Sorry, apology left. I mean, Mr. Kudo's sworn testimony? Exactly. Old man has one very grievous habit. Other than throwing seeds. more of an impression something makes. The more muddled his mind makes it. What's the most striking thing about Mr. L? Clearly, it's the victim's eyepiece, and that's my point. The old man strikes again. Mr. Alex HMD made a big impression on the old man. I saw the earpiece and those newfangled spectacles he was wearing. Oh, and yes, they were both on his left ear. You hear? His left ear. Ah. Well, trite. Ah. Uh. That's the worst, but best impression of Kudo ever. Wow. I only thought he was old CD for a minute there. Kudo was good. Oh, I didn't realize he was actually voicing. Whoops. Bang. Enough. I must agree that yesterday's witness was irresponsibly rash in much of his testimony. Bad luck, Nick. Looks like the boil of a contradiction you found is just a rash. Mio can't be beaten by a handful of seeds. Nor can it lie. I mean, doesn't it? If they think... No? So, what exactly was the old man looking at? Did us in, Mr. Armstrong. Go on, tell the court. We're all ears. So for the achievement, I have to press on every statement. Let's try to figure out which one is related to the actual case. We, oui. I can explain. Please, if you look at La Plans of La Restaurant. The mirror, witness testimony. Alors, is everyone sitting comfortably? Amir, it was in the middle of the restaurant, dividing the two halves. There's only one seat from which you could have seen the image of La Victim. That was La Seat at the table next to La Victim. 
That was where the old man was sitting. After a terrible incident occurred, I moved Lemire so it was not in the way. But naturally, I did not touch anything else. Hmm. That can't be true. Hmm. I see no problems with the explanation we have just heard. Oh, Judge, you're so foolish. From the table next to the victims, Mr. Kudo could have seen the victim in the mirror. What the naughty little... The crow cat? Crow cat? I am confusing all the men like this. Don't worry about it. We can keep up. Except for the guy breaking out in a cold sweat over there again. Ugh, I hate that guy. You said you didn't touch anything else apart from the mirror. Are you quite sure about that? Volunteers, of course. Bang. Very well, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination, if you please. Well, I mean, that didn't line up with the testimony in the boss, so... That's fine. Let's press each statement for the achievement. Hold it! You want this by me again? Mir was here, correct? We... We? Really? As I know if I were you, I wouldn't put a mirror there. It'd be in the way. Objection! Objection. Look who's talking, trite. Huh? You're obstructing my view, among other things. But, 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 this is my seat in the courtroom. Crespian's charm is that it gives you an impression. You're the only customer. <laughs> That's one way to view it, I guess. Temporarily placing a mirror on that spot would hardly be in the way. Like you, right? I tell you, Manzor, the mirror was there in the middle of the restaurant. There's only one seat from which you could have seen the victim. Hmm. Hold it! Where would that be? Ooh la la, look how you lean towards me. It always attracts the younger boys. Maybe I should keep you in suspense a little longer. Gross. Mr. Armstrong, tell the court what you know at once. I attract the older ones too, as you know. Handsome. Shall I tease you too? Please don't. Judge Ungs. Another coffee chat. I'm already seeing a very hot someone. I'm afraid you'll be waiting for a long time. I'm assuming he means his coffee. I bet she has mocha cream skin and cappuccino perfume. Yeah, and I will tell you, there's only one seat from which you could have seen. That was the seat at the table next to the victims. That is where the old man was sitting. Press. Hold it. Why can you only see the victim from that particular seat? My sponsor, your... it is obvious, none. If you look at the plans, you will understand. The victim would have been reflected in the mirror so. If you were sitting at the table next to him, you would see everything, none. I think we were pressed on which vase was damaged, maybe. But that's the seat old CD was seating out on that day. If we look at the... where was it? Yeah, so we already know that can't be true. Is the boss is still there? We'll eventually present this. When the poisoning happened, the old man was sitting at the table next to the victim. How does that seem kind of odd? After a like, terrible incident occurred, I moved the mirror so it was not in the way. I'm pretty sure we're gonna go back to that other one and present the... Maybe the photo? I guess the photo directly. Did you move the mirror while Mr. Kudo was off calling the police? We. Exactamente. I carried it out of La Restaurant Sin. You moved a huge mirror like that all by yourself? What can I say? I know how to pick things up, Ansem. I would dot 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 that too. <laughs> Joe actually laughed at something. Well, given the witness's physique, suppose it is possible. I guess you could say he has strong arms. Did you move anything else from the crime scene? Armstrong. I look like the obliging type, Nan. Okay. Final press statement. Hold it. Hold it! Are you sure about that? I touched nothing except Lemire. Dot dot dot. Mr. Wright, is there something the witness has said that doesn't match the crime scene? Yeah, there is. I can't put my finger on what exactly. Ah. 
suffering from a case of heartburn, right? Oh, I have this... just this thing for Zach. Oh, well, with golden mirror and franken... Gold mirror and frankincense? What? Add a few drops to your coffee, and voila. Enjoy. Focus, Phoenix, breathe. You need to ignore those two and just find some evidence. Pretty strange, though, isn't it? I mean, nobody mentioned anything about a really large mirror. I th I'll double check. I think that's the last part we need for the achievement. Okay. Yeah, once we're done with this, we're gonna go off the notes for what we have to press on. Which is allegedly everything. I think someone would've... But Maggie didn't, and neither did old CD. I don't know what I said, Mer I, they're, I don't know why they're making frankincense and myrrh jokes. I just, I don't get it. I, I, I'm more, I was more confused by that. If I said it wrong, I said it wrong. It just seemed very weird. And the only logical explanation is that there was no mirror inside Trispien that day. Now I've just got to prove it, somehow. Yeah, I don't really get it. Uh, so where is he saying he was sitting at? Okay, so let's present the crime photo here. Forward. Oh, I can't wait to be done with this achievement. This piece of evidence contradicts with the testimony we have heard, Your Honor. The, the crime photo? Yes. This photo clearly shows something that theoretically should not exist. What on earth do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? Should not exist. Ah. Huh. Sounds like you're describing yourself, Trite. Crime photo of Kubo testimony. Now then, if the defense would please clarify its statement. What is this? What is this something that should not exist in this photo? Take that. Take that. Point it at the boss. This is what should not be in that picture. I'm sorry, I'm afraid you've lost me. Um, ah. Uh. Suppose it's up to me to clarify the defense's claim. There's something that shouldn't exist as clearly. Hold it! Wait, wait, wait. Change my mind, Your Honor. Last thing I need... Wait. Wait, I didn't get credit for that? What? Where did I need to point? I feel like I got cheated there, chat. I don't know about you. Oh, oh, oh wrong one. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I got confused. He changed his mind. I'm sorry. No, I was wrong on that one. I take it back. Oh, oops. I didn't realize- Oh, I moved the statement. My bad. Now I'm just making dumb mistakes. I forgot, Chad. It was it was a bit long since we did it. Okay, I'm gonna go back to this one. Sorry, he originally said it was the victim's table, and then he corrected his testimony, and then he moved it to his seat. My bad. I forgot he changed that later in his testimony, which made it ultra confusing to remember for some reason. Let's try this again. Yeah, I know, Murphy. You don't need to, you don't need to explain. I, I would actually prefer you not do that, honestly. Let's go point at the right boss, then. Take that! I think it's pretty obvious that this is what should not be in the picture. The vase? What possible connection does that have with this witness's testimony? Your Honor, I'm telling you that there should have been no vase on this table. Because it very clearly contradicts with this piece of evidence. There's one thing that was clearly demonstrated by yesterday's testimony. Mr. Kudo broke the vase that was on the table where he was sitting. And yet, as the court can see, there's an unbroken vase on the table next to the victim. Why? Because Mr. Kudo was not, in fact, sitting at the table next to the victim at all. Objection! Objection. Don't be an idiot, Trite. That's impossible. That seat's the only one Kudo could have seen the victim's reflection from. Exactly. There's only one conclusion we could draw from this contradiction. There was no mirror in Trace Vienne that day. Your testimony, Mr. Armstrong, is an elaborate lie. Mandu. Don't try to confuse the court, Trite. Obviously, the witness cleaned up the vase, while the police were taking their time getting to the crime scene. Objection! Unfortunately, Mr. Godot, that doesn't quite work for me. 
Mr. Armstrong already testified to the contrary. In his own words, I did not touch anything else except the mirror. Ugh. 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 Oh, he's chugging the coffee. Well, witness, what do you have to say for yourself? Sniffles. I was right. There's no mirror in the restaurant that day. In light of this revelation, we return back to the original problem. Why did the victim have an earpiece and an ear in which he couldn't hear? Ah. You only get one shot in life. There's no turning back. You want to claim that the mirror wasn't there, Trite. And this problem is all yours. How do you explain what the old man saw? I can answer this, then I'll be that much closer to the truth. I can feel it. We're going to be okay. You really solve this contradiction, Nick? There's more than just this one contradiction, Maya. What do you mean? Remember what Maggie told us? There was another man at the victim's table. And there was a sample CD on the victim's table. It all flies in the face of Mr. Kudo's testimony. And I think I know the reason why nothing in this case is adding up. Well, Mr. Wright, let's hear your answer. Yes, Your Honor. The reason behind all the contradiction in Mr. Kudo's testimony is simple. Mr. Kudo made a mistake. The ear doctor made a mistake. The victim was a phony. We'll say the victim was a phony. This case is riddled with contradictions. Yet there is one very simple answer that clears them all up. And what is that? The incident Mr. Kudo witnessed, the incident the victim experienced, were two completely different events. What? Yes, the victim that Mr. Kudo saw wasn't Mr. Glen Elk at all. It was an imposter, a phony pretending to be Mr. Elk. Obviously, unlike the victim, there's nothing wrong with the imposter's left eardrum. That's how he ended up wearing the earpiece in his left ear by mistake. Wait, so, so they're going to make it more complicated. So instead of just saying, like, this event happened, she passed out, then the guy came in and they flipped things around, instead of that being the case, are they saying somebody dressed as him? That seems kind of excessive. Whew. Dramatic coffee take. Bang, bang, bang. Order, order in the court. Settle down or I'll clear the courtroom. White Gramps, why don't you clear out of here, huh? What did you say? Right. Are you saying that mi what Mr. Kudo saw was a setup? Yes. Someone pretended to be Glen Elk and acted out the whole coffee poisoning. All for the express purpose of creating a witness out of one of Mr. Victor Kudo. I mean, I feel like this is a more ridiculous solution because I don't think we met anybody with the same hair color. Though we claiming that any of the people look even vaguely like this character? I mean, we have the chef with the orange hair, we have the ridiculously spiky hair from the um, tender lender, and I don't think it would have been the woman because she was us playing as the waitress. Unless they're saying there's somehow yet another person involved in this. Either way, pretty ridiculous. Objection. Objection. It real trite. Why would anyone want to do that? Isn't it obvious? The thing Mr. Kudo was most insistent about in his testimony was... The serving girl brought him a cappuccino, but she put something in it. That's the serving girl, right there in the defendant's chair. Remember her well. It's so hard to believe, but... There was one, and only one reason to show Mr. Kudo this fake poisoning. To show Maggie Baird in the act of poisoning the coffee. Objection. Objection. Are you insinuating that the waitress of the old man's story was a fake as well? It's true there were no other customers in the restaurant at the time, but... It's also true the chef was there. He would have noticed what was happening. That's right. Well, witness, if your restaurant really was the scene of such theatrics, you would have known about it, correct? Ooh la la, this is most difficult for me. Objection. Objection! No, it's quite simple. All you have to do is testify. You're under oath, after all. Was there, in fact, a phony at Trespian that day? 
The defense demands that Mr. Armstrong tell the whole truth about what happened. Everyone in the case is an imposter. It's like a reverse Among Us, maybe. The defense's request for additional testimony is accepted. You will accurately explain in detail the events in the restaurant that day. Ooh, ooh -ee. Mm -mm. In the restaurant. So this should be the last part I have to do for the achievement. So I'll know in a minute if I got it, I guess. La victim. Once your L. He came to my restaurant alone. I remember the old man arrived not long after him. There were no other customers. When he got word, he won the lottery, Mon. L became very excited. It was approximately five minutes later that the poisoning incident occurred. None. There was no time for a funny to do la acting. On is an abbreviation for Monsoor. Yeah, we, uh, I think we talked about that, I think, in a previous session. Just so we're clear, there was no mirror in the restaurant after all. Oh. Je vous demande pardon. Forgive me, your honor. I lied because I wanted this mess to be cleared up quickly. What you have just done is commit perjury, Mr. Armstrong. Oh, we're admitting perjury exists in this court. I will decide how to punish you later. We. Oui. For now, we will hear your cross-examination. Mr. Wright, if you please. Hmm. Took that perjury charge a bit too well. But I'm guessing he'll be in more serious trouble after this cross-examination. Hmm. For the okay, I'm gonna save in case I accidentally mess up again. I'd really prefer not to do this again. There we go. So let's press. Hold it. Was he alone at his table as well? My sweet. I saw him from the kitchen. Yet the defendant, Miss Bird, remembers it differently. He swears there was another man at the victim's table. Objection. Objection. Ah. Huh. Unfortunately for you, Trite. Yesterday's witness also testified the victim was alone. You know, seeing you squirm like that reminds me of a certain coffee's bittersweet bite. What kind of coffee has he been drinking? Not coffee, it's love. Love that's bittersweet. Hearing Maya say that makes her seem wise all of a sudden. I think Phoenix really did hit his head chat. Okay, so let's press on the statement because we have to. Hold it! My old man, you mean Victor Kudo, correct? We. Oui. He comes often for my special coffee. I drank your coffee once, Mr. Armstrong. It's special, I'll give you that. Worth a sip just for the experience. Oh, you made me so happy, Monsieur. You're most welcome any time. I said it was worth one sip and nothing more. Though, old Mr. Kudo arrived at the restaurant around the same time as the victim. Maybe I should ask about his arrival in more details. Um... He technically answered this, but I guess I could always come back to this other question if I need to. You're saying that not much time elapsed between when the victim and Mr. Kudo arrived. We. Oui, that is correct. That still leaves the possibility that something happened in that gap of time. By your recollection, how much time would you say elapsed? Let me see. Approximately two minutes, I would say. Two minutes, that's all? Hmm. It seems unlikely anything untoward would have happened in such a short time. Rats. I knew you shouldn't have pursued this line of questioning. I want to go back to this one. Let's try the other statement, just in case it's related to the achievement. We'll skip through to the multiple choice. What time was it? Out of curiosity, about what time was it when Mr. Kudo arrived? Oh, no. I cannot remember, Monsieur. Mm. I believe we were told by a witness yesterday. The crime was reported at 2.25 p.m. by a kind of scary old man, sir. Didn't the radio ad say a specific time for the drawing? Indeed it did. At 1.30. Does that perhaps jog your memory, witness? The incident happened about 20 minutes after he arrived. So the victim must have arrived between 2 p.m. and 2 p.m. 2.10 p.m. non. Hmm. Just after 2, huh? 
Thank you for your help in jogging my memory, Manzoor. You are wonderful. Uh -huh. I can't sit here all the time and do nothing now, can I? <laughs> His voice got to me. Let me take another drink. There we go. The time of day will be added to the witness's testimony. Oh, and once you're judged, everything I do, I do it for you. Mercy bien. That's French, isn't it? Ha ha ha. I'm glad at least one person is in a good mood. He's even humming a song to himself. We have to press the statement. Are you absolutely sure about the time? When I... When I think really hard, I'm sure it was just after two, we. Oui. It is the time I stopped serving la me the lunch menu. Right, right. I always break for lunch when the restaurants are serving their specials. I've been known to wind up the case early just to make it on time. That's, uh, not something I think I would admit to, Judge. Ha uh, ha. Uh, guess you should never get between a hungry judge and his lunch. Oh, would you look at that? It's almost lunchtime already. Witness, get on with your testimony, please. There were no other customers. We have to press this. Hold it. No, your only customers were Mr. Kudo and the victim. Objection. How many times do you need to ask the same thing, Trite? You never catch me drinking the same blend twice. Huh? You're trying to establish the presence of a phony victim in the restaurant. But you're wasting your time. You can't grind birdseed to make coffee if you catch my drift. Another coffee mug, Chad. Or there's a hole in his testimony somewhere. I'm sure of it. Man, Chad, this is a lot of statements to press for the achievement. Hold it! Did you see him? No, I was into kitchen, but I heard him. I remember him shouting, yes, half a million bucks. Presumably the defendant heard that too then, correct? Maggie, she looked like a poor little frightened dog. What about Mr. Kudo? The old man choked on some bird seed that got stuck in his throat. Hmm. It seems we now have yet another incident on our hands. Hold it! And what were you doing at that point? Not any customers. You must have had time to kill. I am a multi-talented woman, Monsieur. Sorry? Oh, what do you mean? There is the renowned chef, Don Armstrong, and the tragic poet, Clarice Armstrong. Clarice? Uh, we. Oui. I was writing a poem. An angry tale of a chef in half a million dollars of debt. Looking for a man who, who won half a million dollars on a lottery. It is called... I mean, normally it's poor K, but... Poor Qui? Is that how French say it? It means, why? Perhaps I could recite it for La Corte. Please don't. Okay, final one. Okay, there we go. Final one. Hold it. You mean you contacted the police as soon as the incident occurred? I asked the old man to call from La Payphone. By your own argument, right? The purpose of this phony victim's performance, so the old man would see it. Bourquois, thank you. In other words, once the incident occurred, this opportunity would completely disappear. Indeed. The end. It seems the shadow of doubt has been lifted. I don't remember how to say that. I guess Mr. Armstrong is connected to this case, huh? Absolutely. Someone was impersonating Mr. Elg, and I refuse to believe he was oblivious. He was there the whole time, after all. But if you're right, wouldn't Maggie have noticed, too? I, I'm not going to go back and read it. She fell unconscious when the incident occurred, remember? Ah, uh, you mean that's when the phony stage is at? Oh, staged, plural, excuse me. You mean that's when the phony stage is at? We'll know for sure once I find a hole in his testimony. Okay, well, I would like to just skip straight to just after 2 p.m., presented on this statement. Oh, this is one of those Phoenix Wright gotchas. 
where like <sighs> I think technically if I okay I've had this happen in Phoenix right before where if they say a time and I present it but <sighs> I feel like this is a trick I feel like this is a trick we're going to present it on this one I'm gonna present it specifically here with the 130 and we'll see if we get it this way otherwise I'm just gonna undo and present it on the other one where is this? Objection. Objection! Yeah, see how it accepted that? Phoenix Wright did that to me in another game, and I got very upset at it. I've not forgiven it since then, so I was like, you know what? I'm pretty sure I have to present it on this statement. I'm not falling for your tricks, Phoenix Wright. I feel like that's very rude when you put a time there, and that's not the thing you're presenting to. I'm afraid I finally got you, Mr. Armstrong, because it's like the, the concept of, like, yes, we know he should have been there at 1.30, because he was there for the lottery, but because he wasn't celebrating the lottery in that statement, it doesn't count, even though it's part of the same fact. It's just one of those dumb things. I'm assuming it won't let me present it on that anyway. But anyway, let's proceed for now. I'm afraid I finally got you, Mr. Armstrong. We? What do you mean? At the time in question, the victim was listening to the radio with his earpiece. The show he was listening to was Millionaire Radio. Each week they announced the winning numbers of the half million dollar lottery ticket. It's one of those ones where like, I feel like when I play this game off stream, most of the time it's like, I get the gotcha where like, I know what it, I know where to go with it, but I don't know what to present it on sometimes because I have to make Phoenix realize it. And it's just one of those things where I just end up getting penalties. Not not my favorite when I play those games, for sure, off-stream. We oui. That must have been the show Mon Elk was listening to. I'll just say Mon instead of Monsieur. That's what they wrote. I can't see any problem with this testimony, Mr. Wright. I wonder. You say the victim arrived at your restaurant after 2 p.m., correct? We oui, we. Oui. I'm sure of it. I remember it perfectly now. I know it was that time, because I just finished serving the lunch menu. Get to the point, Trite, if you have one. That show is broadcast live at 1.30, and it claims to be the most thrilling 10 minutes of your life. It's on the air at 1.30. Now, supposedly, the victim made some noise when it was announced that he won. And yet, I don't believe his cry of joy could have occurred after 2 p.m., because the show had already finished more than 30 minutes earlier by that point in time. None! The victim we've been told about has done nothing but the impossible. Listening to the radio with a ruptured eardrum. Catching a show that was already over. There's only one conclusion you could draw from these facts. The victim was an imposter, acting out the poisoning 30 minutes after the real murder. Yes. There were two Glen Elks in Trace BN that day. The real Glen Egg, now dead, having been poisoned by the real killer. And the phony Glen Elk, acting out the events for Mr. Kudo to witness. It certainly seems that way. I mean, if that wasn't the case, how could you explain the time discrepancy? Objection. Objection. Quite a performance, Trite. We're almost on a roll. But sadly, you lack the rock-hard foundation of rhythm to build your saw. What is this? Music Theory 101? Let's recap. According to your imaginative theory, it's now just after 2 p.m. The phony elk is performing a play for the benefit of Mr. Kudo. How do you explain, then, where the real Glen Elg is? I don't believe I have to spell this out for the court, however... At that time, the real Glen Elk was already dead. That's certainly the obvious conclusion. Yeah, I was kind of torn 50-50 whether or not they left him in the booth and were using a mirror to reflect. I think that was the theory we were talking about last time. That way they could witness him quote-unquote dying, but it was just like he had been there for a while and they did a mirror reversal kind of thing. But I think at this point, due to the medicine's location, it's more likely he was just in the kitchen. Objection! Objection! Thank you, Trite. That's exactly what I was hoping you would say. What? Now, I presume you could prove this theory of yours. Can you explain where the missing corpse went to? 
the missing corpse. According to the old man's testimony, there's only one other customer there. If that customer was the phony Glenn L, then where did the killer hide the body of the real victim? Ah! Bang. The prosecution has a valid point, Mr. Wright. If your theory is to stand up to the examination by the court, you must provide us with proof by answering the prosecution's question. Where did the killer hide the body? Yes, Your Honor. No conjecture, Troy. Let's hear some facts for once. Show the court a piece of evidence that proves where the body was hidden. Evidence? What's with the intense pressure in here all of a sudden? Thought I had him with the contradiction. But he's turned it all around and backed me into a corner instead. Bang. Well, Mr. Wright, the court will now hear the defense's theory and evidence. First, where was the body concealed? Okay, inside for sure. It would have to have been too dangerous to take the body outside. Obviously, the body must have been hidden somewhere inside Tres Bien. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But where could a body have been hidden inside a restaurant? Perhaps you would care to show the court on these plans, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. The exact location where the body was concealed inside Trace Bien was... I'm gonna say the kitchen. Take that. Take that! The body was hidden here. Nice supposition. The real question is, can you back it up? Where's the evidence that proves the body was hidden in the location? Uh, I can present the green bottle we got earlier. Take that! Take that. Mr. Armstrong, do you recognize this bottle? None, 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 none. I've never seen that ugly bottle before in my life. I only use the very best bottles, Monsieur. The highest quality only for me. Where was that bottle found, Mr. Wright? Interestingly enough, Your Honor, it was found in the kitchen at Trace Bien. Eh? Oui? I only use these bottles for my aromatherapy oils. But this bottle doesn't contain aromatherapy oil, Mr. Armstrong. No, it contains a medication. What kind of medication? I'm sure everyone remembers, don't they? And Mr. Elk visited in... Let's learn... Otolaryngological? Because I think like larynx. I still don't remember how to say that from last time. Clinic. I was given medication that day. Can't be serious. The defense had the contents of the bottles analyzed. I have the lab results here. Auto layer and jolical? Sure thing. The contents of the bottle matched the prescription that was given to Mr. Elk. I will literally never use that ever again. <laughs> like, I guarantee you, there's other words that I'm interested in for sure, because it's, you know, maybe it'll come up again. That is a word I don't think will ever come up again on stream. <laughs> I, I will probably forget this as soon as the stream is done. Some of the French, maybe it'll stick with me. War. The next murder, murder hid the body in the restaurant kitchen. At which time, this bottle fell out of the victim's pocket. Mr. Armstrong. When the incident occurred, didn't you say you were in the kitchen? But Mandu. Yes, you know what I'm t about to say. It was you who hid the victim's body. You did a fine job pretending to defend my client, Maggie Bird, however. You were setting her up to take the fall behind the poor girl's back. None. Order, order. This is an extraordinary development. Witness, did you... Did you murder Mr. Glenn Elg? Never. I could never do such an horrible thing. No! He's exploding. He drinks the coffee. Mr. Godot. The bitterness. Every time I get lied to, I was down a mug of coffee. That's one of my rules. You have the slightest idea how many cups you've had by now? And I'd like to do the same to the person who lied to me. I'd like to take them down with my empty cup. Listen up, chef. 
Found a brand new flavor in your ear. My H deficient friend. Je vous demande pardon. Please, you must hear me out. It is a trap. Listen to me. Por favor. Uh, yeah, why did he say por favor? What? what? <laughs> No hablo espanol, Mr. Armstrong, and por favor is Spanish. I'm only going to ask you once. Did you do it? None, none, none. Absolutely none. I simply, I... Let's hear it. You've got one shot, right, Gramps? Witness, the court will permit you the chance to make one final statement. You lie under oath again. Mr. Godot's coffee cup mug awaits you, as does my gavel. Oui, oui, it is clear. Do they always say in the movies, got a bad feeling about this? Very well. Begin your final testimony, Mr. Armstrong. Now, if I don't get the achievement by the end of this, I think I somehow missed it, even though I'm pretty sure I pressed every statement, presented every evidence, and presented every profile. So if that's the case, I'm just gonna go, gonna go and just ignore it. I'm not gonna replay, honestly, at this point. That's a lot of the game to replay. It is true. I had the body in the kitchen. A man forced me to do it. I had no choice. I had to go along with him because there was a reason why I could not refuse. But I did not kill him, I swear it. You must believe me. You were forced by who? I cannot say, or I will be erased. Try a different question now. Mr. Elk died. Was he really the only person at his table? There was. Yes, yeah, so I think the first day we presented during the Magatama, but then we also... Pre I think presented all the info in general. On my side, the volume dropped for some reason. We'll continue. There was another map. I knew it. Maggie was telling the truth. You may cross-examine the witness now, Mr. Wright. There's just one more thing I need to do. We gotta break this guy and get him to tell us the name of the real killer. Yeah, I'm assuming because I'm not getting an achievement here, I probably missed it. Let me think where we would have had to have gone. So yeah, I think maybe I just have to go back to my first save again and try. We made another save, and then I could just play from the other save file to where I just saved. But I I'm pretty sure we presented everything in general. It is true. It's a love body in the kitchen. I'll still press it. Hold it. Did you carry the body by yourself? We. Oui. I carried them, and I carried Maggie too. It's kind of like the meals from the previous case. I think I missed, like, literally one statement. I guess it's possible I missed one or like, literally one earlier. I might have skipped a piece of evidence or something silly. Maggie, too? When she saw the victim collapse, she fainted. I could not leave Eros there. But why did you hide the bodies? A man forced me to do it. I had no choice. Uh, 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 uh. Hold it. <laughs> like, don't you scroll to the next thing. What man? Who was he? Nom nom, I cannot say. I fear for my life. He's really scared. I just have to put the words in his mouth, Nick. Yeah, you're right. If you won't tell me, I'll tell him. But why would you go along with this man? I had to go along with him because there was a reason why I could not refuse. We'll press. What reason would that be, Mr. Armstrong? No, Monsieur. Yes. Surely you cannot expect a young maiden to talk about such an embarrassment. Maiden? Get old to get away with that. A bit too male. I can't finish the cross-examination without establishing his reason. I'll just have to prove it. With evidence. 
Oops. I did. Sorry, I didn't realize that. I thought I had one more. I got confused. You already confessed this much. Might as well stop dancing around the real issue. Yeah. He really doesn't want to tell us who the killer is. And sock it to him, Nick. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, I just want to press on the last statement again. Hold it! So, you're claiming that all you did was hide the bodies, is that correct? We... That's right. If we, are to, if we are to believe you, Mr. Armstrong, you must tell the court everything. You must make clear the identity of the man who ordered you to do this. You've already confessed this much. Yeah, okay, so we're at the same point as before. So let's go to... The man forced me to do it, so we'll just present the gray here. I think that should be fine. Objection! Objection! Let's end this dance of Ring Around the Rosie, Mr. Armstrong. This is the man that you've been referring to. Ah! Who is that? I feel like I've seen him somewhere before. Oh, I don't know. Maybe a month ago in this very courtroom? The man is Furio Tigre. The manager of a loan office called Tender Lender. There's no point trying to hide the truth anymore, Mr. Armstrong. I know you couldn't go against Mr. Tigre. At least not while he had this on you. I should have the loan contract. Take that! Half a million dollar loan from a black market loan shark. And you had no way of paying it back, did you? That's why you were forced to do anything. This man told you. We. Oui, it is as you say. Mr. Armstrong. But Tigre... He told me he was going to use my restaurant for a business rendezvous. On the day in question, he was meeting the victim to demand that he repay his loan. I don't know why it happened like that. I just know what he told me to do. I had no choice. I carried the body in the ink... Inconscient instead of inconscient? Unconscious? That is an accent. A uh, conscient Maggie, out of the dining area, and into the kitchen. After that, I tried to forget what I had seen. I think we can now safely say, the man who forced your hand was Mr. Furio Tigre. Hmm. I do have one further question for you, Mr. Armstrong. The poison and the lottery ticket that were found in the defendant's apron pocket. Was that your doing as well? None. I knew nothing about that, making it look like it was Maggie who had done it. I was... I was not... It is despicable. Bag. Mr. Godot. You will summon this Furio Tigre as a witness. I doubt that can be arranged today, so we'll adjourn for now. Proceedings will continue tomorrow. Thirty minutes. What? The trial will go on. I'll see to it myself. I need half an hour to get that guy on the stand. Not a minute more. How the? Don't sit back and relax yet, Trite. No one knows if that chef is really telling the truth or not. This trial could still go either way. Bang. Very well. Your request is granted, Mr. Godot. We'll resume once Mr. Tigre is ready to take the stand. Until then, court is adjourned for a 30 minute recess. To be continued. He's got most of the dozen cups of it, I'm gonna run him down. Most likely. Yeah, I don't think I got the achievement, sadly, even though we did spend a lot of time talking to him. That was so not worth it. I'm not going back for it. January 8th, 121 p.m. Just a court. Defendant lobby number one. It's possible the, the thing I looked at earlier was not correct. Where they missed something. Like I had to press something else earlier. But we're finally going to see the tiger on the stand. We've almost got this case won now, Nick. I wish I could agree. Huh? When I cross-examined Mr. Armstrong just now. Said he was just doing what the tiger told him to do. Godot picked up on it, remember? He pointed out that without proof, we don't know if he 
What he testified is the truth. You mean, think Mr. Armstrong was lying? I don't know, but that's the line the prosecution takes. We could be in trouble. Get the feeling that we don't have the case-making evidence we're gonna need. Hey, pal. Detective Gumshoe. What are you so jumpy about, Detective? Your hair's standing on end. Hey, that's the pot calling the kettle black, little Miss Top Nod. It's not a Top Nod. Never mind about the hair. Just calm down, all right. I, I, I can't stand still when I don't have a job to do. You uh, kind of wound up. Ah! No kidding. You gotta have something you need me to do, pal. Anything. Well, um. Hey, I'm gonna take a jog back down to the precinct. I could get some prints analyzed for you if you got an hour. An hour? The child will have to be reconvened by then. But Nick, you still don't have a really decisive piece of evidence, right? True. That's some kind of trump card to pull out of the bag. We're really stuck. You said you could get some fingerprint analysis done in an hour? You bet. In that case, would you mind checking the prints on this for me? I will present the green bottle. You're going back to the station anyway. Did you find out whose prints are on this? It is, in fact, a top now. Chat calling them out. Oh, hey, that's a small bottle I gave you back... I gave back to you this morning, right? Yeah. I think it's time we solve the last mystery of whose prints... Or, excuse me, of who the prints on it belong to. Sure thing, pal. Actually, that's been gnawing at me, too. Small bottle given to Detective Gumshoe. Okay, I'll get this off to the lab right away. Just make sure you don't lose the case before I get back. Pretty much the final showdown, I guess. Time to separate the phonies from the real guys. January 8th, 1.56 p.m., District Court, courtroom number four. Bang. Court will now reconvene. Mr. Godot, did you find this Furio Tigre? Another coffee chat. I even tamed him for you. It was a three-cup job, no problem. Tamed him? His name may be Furio Tigre, but come on. He's pretty lively. Be careful, he still bites. Very well. Please show Mr. Tigre to the stand. Just like permanently scowling at us. Um, witness, please state your name and occupation for the- Ah! Ah! Don't hide under the table, Maya. Unless there's room down there for me, too. I, um... W would you mind... What's you say to me? N nothing. I did say nothing. Unless... Who could have guessed that fear could induce a bad Brooklyn accent in the judge? I got business to take care of. You hear me? Who the hell called me into this hole? Was it you, Spikey? Uh, no, of course not. It was... The judge? Your Honor? Oh dear, I am. Um, I seem to have dropped my pen. Where on earth is it? Don't mind me. Just carry on with the proceedings as normal. That's it. We're doomed. Maybe you didn't hear me. I said, who the hell was it that called me in here? There's no need to shout. We can all hear you. What do you say? There's no point struggling. You're caught in a snare. The relentless snare of the law. Ludana almost said, oh dear, Chad. He technically had more of a chance of saying that than anything else. Because there are two prompts that say, oh dear. And I'm the one that hauled you in. Grr. Too cool. Don't let him get the better of you, Nick. Let's start with the basics. You know about the incident in question, correct? Incident? I don't know nothing about no stinking incident, mask boy. You mean you didn't attend the previous trial, Maggie Burr? Maggie, ooh? I, I've gotten more important things to do than watch courtroom dramas. Of course. Well, perhaps you could give us your testimony then. Please tell us about what you did on the day of the murder. Hm. Phoenix Wright. You was the one who set this up, didn't you? Who's gonna regret the day you ruffled the tiger's fur? Hear what I'm saying? Gulp. Maybe I should have brought a diaper with me today. Get a grip, Nick. The tiger's alibi. 
I don't know nothing about no murder. I was tied up with business in December last year. And all my time in my office. Well, obviously we're gonna present something there. I got wheels lined up to borrow cash from tender lender every single day. Who just wanna check my alibi? Just ask Violetta. Oh, unless I found my pen. Very well then, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination- What is it? Please witness if you could refrain from shouting like that. I know the kind of games that guy in the blue plays. Hello Life ain't no lawyer. He just punches away at stupid details till he wins. Hello Life? Me? Listen up, smarty. Every time you ask me something that doesn't relate to this case, I'm gonna bill you $50,000. And you just gotta borrow the cash from me. Uh, that's one loan contract I refuse to sign. And don't think you ain't gonna get hurt when you tangle with the tiger. Oh, I love a good spectator sport. Just a minute. That's really not. This witness is... How can I put it? Hungry tiger roaming the urban jungle. Get on his bad side and he'll bite everyone's head off. Yours too. Very well. I have no choice but to impose a penalty system here. I mean, you could just choose not to be threatened. <laughs> right, Chad? He's better be listening. I got business to take care of. Big business. If I don't split now, I ain't gonna catch my bus. Bang. The court will impose a penalty for any irrelevant pressing of witness testimony. Keep that in mind as you begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. You could do it, Nick. Not from under there already, would you, Maya? So here's an example of, like, had I not played a Phoenix Wright game before, I guarantee you I would get a penalty on this. Like, chat, if your instinct was to press evidence here, or present evidence here... No. Even though the game just went out of its way to say not to press, it still wants you to press here. I hate that so much, chat. In the Phoenix Wright games, you have no idea. I really don't dislike this. Hold it! It's because he doesn't specifically say he was busy, or was busy at the time. We can't present the calendar. I know. It, it feels kind of unfair, to be honest. Like, if you present to that statement in particular, it should just count. Are you sure about that? We're talking about one month ago, you know. You see these teeth? That's how sharp my secretary is. Sharp? Is he talking about Viola Cad Cadaverini? He writes everything in my scheduler. December, mainly in the office. That's what it says, so that's where I was. That seems like a rather uh, sketchy schedule. Ugh. There he goes again. Hmm. What did the tiger do all December isn't the issue. What's important is what he was doing on the day of the murder. So now what? We have to press harder. Mr. Tigre, what do you want? Uh, you wouldn't mind going into a bit more detail? Objection. Objection. This is a dead end, Triton, you know it. Remember the rules. Objection! Objection! No. It's essential we establish the witness's alibi accurately. I agree. The victim was killed on December 3rd. Were you in the office that day, too? Maybe you was ain't listening. Of course I was. I never set foot outside. There we go. Now I can present the evidence. I had meetings all day with a bunch of cats wanting to do business with me. I ain't never seen that young kid before. I do believe the witness's last statement was important. Um, Mr. Godot, if you could please. Mr. Tigre, the court asked you to add that last statement to your testimony. Hmm. Don't let an animal beat you. Be a man, Your Honor, and ask him yourself. Now he says, the day you was talking about, I was in the office too. Never seen that kid before. Now we can present that evidence. I'm trying very hard not to mess up since we already had a... Forgetful error on my part, and then I forgot that the game moves your statement. If you get it wrong, it reset it back to the beginning. Though I pressed it before I saw what it was. Which I guess is technically my fault, but I still find that very annoying. Uh, okay, Glenn's calendar. Let's go present it here. Mr. Tigre, you claim you didn't know Mr. Glenn Elk, but it appears that Mr. Elk knew you. What? Mr. Elk left this little note on his calendar. Meet with the tiger. And the date? December 3rd. December 3rd? That's... 
That's the day of the murder. So, Mr. Tigre, I submit that you did indeed know one Mr. Glenn Elg. Because on that very day of the incident, you met with him. Bruh! Ha ha ha! Not bad. He's actually not bad. Sorry? I was just messing with you. See how good you were. Did you hear that, Nick? He said you're not bad. Although, now that I'm reading his dialogue, I'm thinking of, uh... The Black Turtles from Berseria. It's one compliment I could do without. Plus, he's lying through his teeth. Um, witness, please remember that you're under oath. Lies will not be tolerated. He's calling me a liar? Is that what you're doing? Exactly. He rut road? What is he, Scooby? So you're saying that your claim to have never seen that kid before is the truth. I said I'm dead serious. Who's better believe that's the truth? Ah, then I'd say that gives me a, give me time to enjoy another cup of pure black magic. That is, while you testify for the court again, Mr. Tigre. Oh yes. Um, would you mind indulging the court witness? Never actually met the victim? That's gotta be a lie right there. How I nailed this guy? Well, coffees at least. The victim, Glenn Elg. I ain't no liar. I never met Glenn Elg. There was some lame guy with that name, though. Why don't you borrow some cash from me? I said I'd been meeting with the guy in my office, Tender Lender. I waited around for him, but he ain't ever showed. I ain't ever been to the Trace Bean joint, you hear? Okay. Well, that's easy enough to disprove. Well, even then, technically, he could just say a customer brought it in. I feel like this is still not a gotcha. I, I feel like it's one of those things where only if the, the defendant really admits to it does it actually matter. Because he could just say any one of his other clients went there. And we don't have proof that the matches are from that time. So technically, he might not have ever set foot in there, and it could have been a gift or something. I feel like this just opens it up to nonsense, but he'll probably confess because he's stupid. I see. That all seems perfectly logical. You had arranged to meet with the victim, but he didn't show up. I've heard it's pretty hard to keep appointments when you're dead. Very well. You may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Then I tell you I got a big deal going down today. I ain't gonna make my bus now. I have to take the express train. That bill's going straight to you, Wright. Uh... Okay, I mean, I can at least prove somebody in his office went there. I feel like this might be the loosest piece of evidence so far we've presented across the cases. Where, again, we don't have proof that he even brought it. I mean, it could even been his secretary. Right, chat? There's so many outs he could have for this, it's, like, unreal. He just says his secretary has the match because she knows he smokes. Isn't that easy? It's like, you don't even have to, like, think about it. And how many how many plot holes this would leave if he just fought back at this at all. Objection! Objection. Mr. Tigre, is there something you'd like to tell the court about these matches? Matches? What you's talking about? We found them in your office at Tender Lender. They're from that restaurant. What? If you've really never been to Trespien before, what was the book of the restaurant's matches doing on your desk? He's been stooping around in my stuff now, too. Wise guy. What are you, my ball and chain? Ain't no broad control in me. Bang. Ironic, given uh, the bill he had to pay. Order, order. Well, witness, I think it's time you started telling us the truth, don't you? I mean, again, this is just such an easy way he could get out of this. He grogs. Sorry, I'm terribly sorry. Forgive me. Ain't no pussycat. I don't go back on what I said. But okay, I was at the joint that day. I mean, he should just get charged for perjury at this point. What? Well, listen, good, all right? I might have been there, but I still never met the kid. Well, well. Looks like an order just came in for another testimony. 
Yeah, plus we stole exactly. We didn't even hand him over to the police. Where's the evidence law, Dango? Where is the evidence law? Did did Gumshoe approve this? I don't think so, chat. I'm this close to proving it was him. He did meet Glen Elk that day, and he did put poison in his coffee. He must have. I trace the end. I was supposed to meet with the kid at the restaurant that afternoon. I opened the door to the joint. It's all one ugly scene. You opened the door. All the scene? I don't think that's possible. I'm gonna keep that in the, the back of my head for now. The guy was laid out. Of oh, yeah, he definitely would have been able to see this from the door because his back was there. The guy was laid out over the table, stiff as concrete. I figured the place wasn't hot already. It was gonna be, so I split. I heard the cop sirens on my way out. I went straight back to my office. That doesn't explain the matches. I see. You didn't actually meet with him in the end, then. Well, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Hold it. If I wait around here any longer, I ain't even gonna make the normal express. No more stupid questions. Ah. Oh. No problem. Anytime Tripe presses you on something irrelevant, I'll see he pays a penalty. Mr. Cadeau, that's my job. Your job is to slam that little hammer of yours and call a guilty verdict. Wow, that, uh... Cadeau took a real hard turn there as to what his job was. I feel like he was a bit more respectful to the judge initially, but wow. This case... So do it. Yes, sir. I feel like he's taking, like, Von Karma vibes with that last statement. Isn't that something Von Karma would say? I feel like that's kind of off for him. Godot's kind of tired of the judge at this point. That's true, Murphy. That That's a fair point for Murphy. The Special Express ain't cheap, right? This will use no since you was paying. Oh, man. Doesn't the rule of law mean anything around here? Yep, where's the evidence law, Phoenix? Where is the evidence law? Got way too much coffee pumping through him. He's all agitated. Hmm. It's making sense now. I'm liking where the chat's going with it. I like them thinking a little bit about what's going on. I like that. Good job, chat. Uh, well, I mean, he can't possibly see him from the entrance. Is it just that simple? Objection! Objection. You're something of a lone collecting pro, aren't you, Mr. T. Gray? No one escapes the tiger's clutches. Well, I'm something of a lie-detecting pro. <laughs> In a very loose sense, I guess. See case... See, what was it? The end case of uh, the second game where we're like, uh, no. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. And no one escapes the phoenix's clutches. I think it's time we got something straight. What's this, Trite? New line of irrelevant questioning. These are the floor plans of the crime scene. You say you were standing at the entrance, Mr. Tigray. From there, your field of vision would have covered some an area like this. Indeed, the witness would have had a clear view of the victim's seat. Isn't that what I just said? Hold the back of the kid's head. Unfortunately for you, that is not possible. Exactly, he would have been passed out on the table. They definitely wouldn't have seen him. The court would think back. Remember that between each of the tables. Also, there's the mirror. Well, oh, the partition too. I mean, there's a lot of reasons he should have been able to see him. Why, that's true. Now look at the plans again. The truth is painfully obvious. From the entrance, the field of vision of any customer walking in ends here. Uh-oh, he's now sweating. So, from the entrance of Trespien, you couldn't have seen the victim's seat. But you did see the victim that day, because you met with him. Objection! Objection. Wrong. Have you forgotten the old man's testimony yesterday? The victim was alone at his table. Objection! Objection. But the defense just proved that point to be moved. The victim witnessed by Mr. Kudo was not Glen L, but a fake. What? In order to have Mr. Kudo falsely testify, the real killer poses the victim. 
you just killed and acted out a charade. How did the old man not recognize? <laughs> My brain is like super breaking on this. That that requires a series of coincidences. I really don't like how they ended this case. So you're telling me that Tigre dressed as Glen Elg and they didn't recognize him? Right, chat? Like, uh, okay, okay. They don't even look similar. Bang. That will do. This trial has gone on long enough without the obvious question being answered. Remember that kudo? But he has spiky hair! Is, is he gonna say he didn't see it through the, the, the stupid little beanie thing this guy's wearing? It's like everywhere on this character. Oh my gosh. And not to mention he's beat red and has a scar. Maybe he didn't see the scar, but still. They don't really look that similar. I would buy it more if they were confusing, like, Viola with Maggie. I would be more willing to buy that, but not that. Who exactly was this real killer who impersonated the victim? You say the killer murdered Glen Elg and then impersonated his victim in a performance for Victor Kudo. Look, you're gonna associate some people randomly being read. I'm just like, I mean, that that is just like such a series of like, thankfully they all knew that like, it's just like one of those things where it's like, that he would have to know that he could get away with it and even conspiring with the chef. It's just like, ah. Oh. My brain is broken. Well, I guess we'll present Furio Tigre. Obviously, the killer is Furio Tigre. No one else could have done it. What? Well, witness. <laughs> now that's cute. You think you can pin this on the tiger? Maybe you don't understand. The tiger is the king of the jungle. So I dares you to say it again. Come on, you got guts? You can't threaten me, Mr. Tigre. Only only the faker? Oh no. I feel I feel like at some point I have to play Sonic Adventure 1 or whatever, so we'd hear about the faker. Udo never saw Glenn Elg in person. He allegedly saw him though. That's the thing. He did see him. That was the whole point of his testimony. Like, I'm just like shaking my head. I guess they never saw the real him. If that's what you mean, they never saw the real him, maybe. It's still very ridiculous. It's the defense. Go ahead and tell the witness, Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright. Down to me like it must be you, old man. You's got guts, I'll give you that. Mr. Wright, do not leave me to handle this alone. It's okay, chat. This is still a bottom four case for me. I'm willing to say this is bottom three. I'm willing to put this as, like, slightly... slightly above the second game's cases, but not by much. <laughs> I'm willing to put it there, chat. I don't think we played one quite as bad, to be honest. Oh, perhaps I can end this embarrassment. Mr. Godot. Let's just go back over Mr. Kudo's testimony one more time. No man didn't just see the victim. Oh no, no, no. The serving girl brought him a javachino, but she put something in it. There's no question about it. He very conspicuously put some white powder in there. Oh, Adventure 2's the faker? Thank you. I haven't played either game. Isn't the lion the king of the jungle? Probably. I think that was supposed to be the joke, maybe. Was the vic- oh, excuse me. Was the victim he saw the real victim or not? That doesn't matter. The fact remains. He saw the accused put poison into the coffee. Yes, it was the waitress who- Objection! Very impressive, Mr. Godot. Waiting for my absence to launch your attack. Ah. Oh. Found your pen at last, Trite? It was in my pocket. Ahem, but anyway. Mr. Kudo witnessed two people that day. He saw the victim, the supposed Mr. Glenn Elg, and the waitress from behind. Yes, your point, Mr. Wright. 
think the conclusion is obvious. This Glen Elg was really the killer in disguise. And surely it's possible the waitress was also part of the show. What? You mean the waitress was an imposter as well? The defendant, Miss Bird, fell unconscious immediately after the incident. And someone used her feigning to hatch an elaborate plan to pin the murder on her. Bang. Who on earth was it? Who was this waitress that Mr. Kudo witnessed? Well, I mean, there's only one other character it could be. Take that! Who is this woman? Her name is Viola Cadaverini. She's an employee of Tender Lender. Who's making a big mistake? Do you know who Violetta's grandfather is? You better be going home in an armored truck tonight, if you know what I mean. It was Bruto. Stop shaking, Nick. Where was I? Yes, the defendant. Miss Bird was sta has stated the following. Well, when I took the coffee over to the victim's table, I'm sure there was another customer in the restaurant. Um, she was sort of creepy. Kind of a cackling laugh. There are just too many contradictions in this case. Second man at the victim's table who nobody but Miss Bird seems to have seen. The earpiece worn by the victim in his left ear when the eardrum was ruptured. In the radio show he was supposedly listening to the half an hour after it was over. There's only one logical explanation that clears up all of these contradictions. The whole incident took place twice. Once for real and once for show. And Mr. Furio Tigre, the only person who could have committed the crime. Is you. Oh, actually, to talk about what uh, Murphy was mentioning earlier and why I was also saying it was ridiculous... The old man testified in the original trial in which this man dressed as Phoenix Wright. I just want to be clear. <laughs> just to bring that, remind everybody as a plot point, he saw this guy later in the previous trial because he had to testify. Question mark. <laughs> just this case is ridiculous. I really don't like this case. Be great dot dot dots. He thought he was red like a phoenix? I guess. Witness, what have you got to say? That's cute. Sorry. You's alright. I could do with a guy like you around. Well, what do you mean? It's just bad sunburn. Okay, I'm in on this game. I'm gonna have to charter a jet to get my meeting now, but... I'm gonna give you one more thing to think about before I go. Something to think about. They do kind of have the same hairstyle. Yeah, that is the joke. <clears throat> you's got it all wrapped up nice, all right? But you's missed out one real important thing. That can't be. I was in the joint that day. I met that kid, too. How is this guy? Oh, oh, on, on perjury alone, this guy has literally contradicted himself three times. Please put him in jail, Judge. Dot, 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 exclamation mark. We're going to go with unreliable witness. I couldn't have poisoned him, you see here. What? Do you really expect us to believe you now, Mr. Tigre? Ugh. Oh. What a troublemaker. What a <laughs> How do we shout a disbelief so thoroughly that nothing else in the series is questioned? They tried that a little bit in the second game. Looks like we're gonna need another one for the road. Well, welcome, Remote Battery. Hope you're doing well. One more steaming cup of hot testimony. Bang. Indeed. Witness, you will explain yourself to the court for like the fifth time. I will give you one more chance to testify. What happened that day at Trespian between yourself and the victim? Eyes to the victim. In his testimony. Yeah, I loaned El Cash. About $100,000. That day, he was due to have a little chat. It had hit his pay date. Payback date, see? So anyway, he tells me he's got no way to pay up. Not to flatten the guy when he starts screaming. Yes, I won. Half a million bucks. He got lucky, you know. Real lucky. If that waitress hadn't done what she'd done, everything would have been over.
Now, I see that the principal amount you loaned to Mr. Elg was $50,000. Yeah, well, you just got... You has got the Vig to take in... To a... Vig? I don't know what they're... I know that's supposed to be an accent, but... I don't know what that's supposed to be. Chat, enlighten me. What word is he trying to say here with the accent? You has got the Vig to take into account. Interest builds up fast, you know. Does he mean, like, Vic? But he's using a G there? I don't think I've ever seen that in, like, an accent. That's faster than fast. $100,000 is twice his principal. And the repayment deadline was December 3rd, the day of the incident in question. Yeah, like, I don't even know if Vigor worked in that sentence. That's why I was a little confused. Yeah, he was one lucky kid. Blue Donna's still catching up as usual. Gentilian. He got that half a million just in time. I mean, there's no reason to kill the kid. And if I ain't got no motive, you ain't got no case. That is actual slang for interest paid on a loan. That is very interesting. That could come up again in the future. His motive? Hmm. He has to have one, but what is it? What do you mean, what is it? Let's put the... the what do you mean? <laughs> Chat, chat, what do you mean? Phoenix, please. $100,000 or potentially millions. Gee, Phoenix, what was his motive? Idiot. Eyes of the victim. Well, I guess we gotta press him a bit. So what is? What did he mean by if the waitress or whatever he said? Yeah, what, what does this mean? Hold it. Hold it. <laughs> the evidence, yeah. The waitress, you mean. Go with the glasses and defendant's chair. Who else could I mean? If she hadn't gotten the way, things would have been bada bing bada boom and over and done with. Maybe I should push a little on this. Um. Okay, so. I don't think I'm gonna ask him what Maggie did. I think I need him to admit that he got the loan back and therefore he had no motive. So if he can mention his money due. I can maybe then present the very obvious evidence of why he did this. So let's ask how things would have been. What do you think things would have been over and done with? Please turn the on switch and look at it under your frontal lobe, yeah. Are you all there or what? I'm talking about the cash. I'm there to get my 100,000 bucks back, that's all. I'm a man of business. It was all coming together before that waitress got in the way. Hmm. As far as I could tell from the witness's testimony, other than recouping his loan, Mr. Tigre had no motive for killing the victim. Witness, you will amend your testimony to reflect what you just said. Tiger's motive, huh? So, I mean, like, this just kind of falls apart completely, because if we know it's worth millions... And just GG here. So we're just gonna present it here. Objection! Objection! I mean, even from his own story... Uh, I guess he didn't technically say what he was going to do if he did win the lottery. I guess that isn't a gotcha on that one. I'll, I'll give him that, I guess. You just intended to get back the $100,000 Mr. Elg owed you, correct? I loaned the guy to cash, so that's my right. Unfortunately for Mr. Elg, I don't believe the $100,000 is what you were really after. Objection! Objection. What are you getting at, Trite? What else could a moneylender be after other than money? Oh, moneylender was after the was after money, but money in a totally different league. Not a money that a single disc like this would fetch. What is that? A computer virus, Your Honor. A virus called MC Bomber. A computer virus. What does one of those do? Computer virus is a program that wreaks havoc on the insides of a computer. A computer. What does one of those do? Judge, you should really retire. I guess the beard isn't the only part of his honor that is from the Stone Age. I'll explain it to you later, Your Honor. Right now, this is the important point. A virus like MC Bomber would be worth several million dollars on the black market. The several million dollars? Lending money with no hope of ever seeing repayment would normally be bad for business. But in this case, the very fact that Glen Elk had no way to repay the money is crucial. Aren't we in the future in this game? I think what happened, to answer Chris's question, 
I think they went back and added all the like modern technology in the first game and that kind of skewed when this game was supposed to take place. I think that's why the technology is confusing in this game. Because if you remember, they're still like in the era of flip phones. Technically. <laughs> but it is a little confusing because of some of the game or some of the things they updated. I checked the way he said it was, early, was like the 20s, the 40s. I'm not sure what official thing it is. For what it's worth, even now flip phones are popular in Japan. But it was to the point where they didn't have flip phones. <laughs> no, but I was saying, like, they didn't even have the flip phones. Yeah, I'm aware you don't mean 1920s, Murphy. It's pretty obvious. But I'm just talking about, like, they talked about not even having a phone. If you remember earlier, the judge talked about that specifically. So I'm like, this hat, like, the game would have come out in, like, the early 2000s. It's supposed to be in the future, allegedly, I think. And obviously we're seeing remnants of that with things like references to CDs and stuff like that. But I think even then, when they updated the first game, they added stuff that would have been now modern, and it threw off, like, the technology the game itself has. If that makes more sense. Like, with all the ridiculous, like, cyber tech and identification of stuff, like, there's a reason that hasn't come up before. <laughs> it's just that they added that after, as far as I know, by quite a bit. When Elg was a programmer, at least skilled programmer. That skill was the collateral Mr. Elk put up in order to borrow the money. Objection. Objection. You're trying to suggest the witness's motive was to get hold of that program. Exactly. The witness may have poor fashion sense. He's by no means an idiot, right? A man like him could get his hands on one million dollars without resorting to murder. Of course he could, provided he had the time. But what if he needed the money right then? When the pressure's on, the luxury of choice tends to disappear. It seems you have a logical conclusion for this theory, Mr. Wright. Would you care to share it with us? Why did Mr. Tigray need money in the tune of one million dollars? Okay, we still have the other thing. I'm assuming they didn't take it from us. There we go. Let's present the medical papers. Take that! December of last year. You found yourself in need of a huge amount of money. About six months ago. You are involved in a traffic accident, weren't you? An accident involving a car and a scooter, in which a young woman was injured. She was taken to the hospital, where she underwent surgery. Yeah, to give give context for the, the chat, I'm going to remind you. This game came out originally in Japan in 2004. <laughs> you, have to, you have to put it in the concept of that's about when the game came out. And it came in January 2004, so technically it would have been in development before then, too. That's not exactly like the era of modern phones, for sure. She's taken to the hospital, where she underwent surgery. How much it just do you know? These medical papers document the treatment of the young women in question. According to the, or according to these, her operation cost one million dollars, and yet when the payment was due last month, you somehow managed to pay it in full. One million dollars. A preposterous sum. Someone should sue these HMOs. Ah, oh, no one would pay a bill like that. The medical association got wind of it. Hospital went up as dead as a morgue. But Mr. Tigre had no choice but to pay. Because his very life depended on it. He grargs at us. Order, order, order. 
You say his life depended on it, Mr. Wright. Indeed it did. Simply because the injured woman was none other than Viola Cadaverini. You say Cadaverini. Bruno Cadaverini. Mob boss in charge of all underworld activities in the city and doting grandfather to his precious Violetta, also known as Viola Cadaverini. Your life was in danger unless you paid compensation to the boss, correct? It makes sense. You were desperate to acquire one million dollars Bruto Cadaverini demanded of you. So desperate, in fact, that you decided to sacrifice Glen Elg's life to pay your debt. Bang, bang, bang. On the day of the murder, Mr. Tigre's sole intention was to get his hands on this CD. Glen Elk had no way of paying back the $100,000. Mr. Tigre knew it. But then a miracle happened. That kind that Mr. Tigre would prefer to say never happened. But he can't, and neither can I. The lottery win. Exactly. At the 11th hour, Miss Elg won half a million dollars on the lottery. Left Mr. Tigre with no way of getting his hands on the all-important CD. At least, no legitimate way. Sprinkle, sprinkle, chat. They resorted to illegitimate means. That's crazy. He murdered Glen Elk and then made his next move. Framed Maggie Bird for the crime. Mr. Tigre posed as Glenn L. While Viola Cadaverini played the role of Miss Bird. Then they reenacted the whole thing in order to establish a witness. Witness being the one we all heard testify yesterday, Mr. Victor Kudo. Objection! Like I said, Troy, that's crazy. No one could pull off a stunt like that. For starters, there's no way the chef could have kept been kept in the dark about it. Objection! And Mr. Armstrong was in on it from the very beginning. We've forgotten already, Mr. Godot. Mr. Armstrong owed the witness money, too. Half a million dollars, in fact. He had no choice but to go along with Mr. Tigre's plan. Bang, bang, bang. Order, order. Silence, or I will clear the courtroom. <laughs> you just put on a good show, Spikey. You just want to stay alive in the Lone Shark business. You gotta be careful. Are you saying I dressed up like that kid? Created a witness and framed someone? How did he even put on his outfit? I just feel like the more... The more I think about this, the more I get confused. Was he also, like... <laughs> My brain is trying to process what he must have looked like. I did something crazy like that. Leave a trail as bright as my shirt. I ain't dumb enough to do something sloppy like that. I agree. Y you do? Despite your appearance, you're very careful. Don't think about it too hard, I think so. That's why you took one more precaution. Yeah, this this is just ridiculous, by the way. One more trick to make sure Miss Bird had no way out. What? Another one, Mr. Wright. Interesting. Why don't you fill this all in, Trite? What was the trick you say Mr. Tigre performed to frame the accused? We'll present the stupid paper badge. Take that. Take that! What on earth is that? What an insult to think anyone could be fooled by such childish imitation. Consider yourself insulted, Your Honor. Mr. Tigre, you didn't just pose as the victim on the day in question. A month ago, in this very court, you posed as me. What? That's... that's... the truth. But... the witness looks nothing like you, Mr. Wright. Although... now that I think about it, it was you, wasn't it? No doubt it was you, standing in here this very courtroom a month ago. The Phoenix Wright who put up the most dis... <laughs> disreputable, shabby defense I'd ever seen. Ugh. Rah! Objection. Can you prove that, Gramps? Prove the attorney who represented the accused here a month ago was this man. Are you prepared to take the stand and testify that it was him? Hmm. 
Hey. Forget about it, yeah. I wouldn't do something like that, not me. You you made a mistake, right? It was someone else, huh? Objection! Objection. Have you no pride, sir? Objection. Objection. <laughs> you should just say badgering the witness. <laughs> that would have been that would have been fine. This isn't a matter of pride. In case you didn't know, Trite, here in court, we deal with people's lives. Uh, Mr. Godot is right, Your Honor. Speaking for myself, I am absolutely convinced. The attorney in question was the witness standing before me now. However, I preside over this court as the judge, with the vested power to hand down a verdict. Forcing the persecution, something like that. Someone in my position cannot be swayed by a memory without evidence to support it. No! Bang. If the defense has no further evidence, the court will now excuse the witness. The circumstances surrounding Mr. Tigre are dubious for sure, but not conclusive. W what <laughs> But we've come so far! Kangarooing the court? Yeah, that works too. You say you impersonated Glanell. Say he impersonated you, but none of that adds up to a murder charge. I mean, it adds up to more serious charges, yes. Wouldn't that- wait, no? No. You don't have a shred of evidence that the witness poisoned the victim's coffee. Oh, well now you're gonna get busted as Gumshoe comes in. Ah! Huh. Sucks to be you, right? Don't mess with the tiger, or you're gonna get mauled, you's got that? All we managed to do was chase him around a bit. But I was so close to having him admit his own guilt. Huh. Looks like I won't be needing a refill. I just had one more piece of evidence. Oh, that was so close. One more piece- oh, that feels like I'm being teased. One more piece of evidence, and maybe I could get Maggie off the hook. Bang. This witness's cross-examination is over. You're free to go, Mr. Tigre. Wait, why is he- f wait, no? Perjury? No? Nothing? He's just free to go? I would be mad too, people in the audience. Hold it! Yeah, that was inevitable. Your Honor, sir. Wait! Detective. Detective. Oh, Detective Gumshoe. Sorry I took so long, pal. I... I... I staked everything on this. My badge, the works. And here it is. My heart's counting on this, too. Well, what is it, Detective? Isn't it obvious, pal? It's the final decisive piece of evidence. Well, what? Aid to black. January 8th, 248 p.m. Just a court, defendant not lobby number one. Sorry it took so long, pal, but I finally got the results from the lab. The results? Not the prints, pal. From this medicine bottle. Oh, so do you know who the prints belong to now? You think I'm some kind of hack detective? Of course I know. <laughs> to be honest with you, gumshoe, maybe not. So tell us. They're the tigers, right? I knew it. <laughs> You bet. Oh no. Every time they say you bet, I just keep thinking of Tales of Eternia. He's gonna be shouting for Quickie or something any minute now. Clear as crystal all over the bottom. The Fury of Tigre's paw prints, all right. That's great. We got him now, Nick. Phoenix dot dot dot. What's wrong with you? Hardly said a word since Detective Gumshoe got here. He's laid everything on the line for this. I know. Look, I'm sorry. It's kind of hard to say, but... It really doesn't make any difference whose prints are on that bottle now. Huh? What? Why not? What we need to produce at this stage in the trial is irrefutable evidence that the tiger put poison in Glen Elk's coffee. Viva, indeed. He already admitted that he met the victim. In fact, his prints are on this bottle. It really doesn't make any difference now. I knew it. Great, no matter how hard I try, I'm never of any use. Hey, don't be so hard on yourself. This was our last chance to help Maggie. I've been working on some useless piece of evidence the whole time. 
It's all right. I'm a real loser. Not breaking news to me, pal. Um, Detective Gumshoe? Maggie? You've been working on something for me? Sorry I let you down, Maggie. I know you didn't do it. I'm a detective. We're supposed to be able to prove stuff like that. Wait, do we still have the... <laughs> we still have the lunchbox. <laughs> we just never gave it to her. That's kind of messed up. I'm really sorry. I'll get out of your hair now. Detective Gumshoe, wait! He's gone. Isn't there anything we can do now, Nick? I wish there was. Gumshoe worked so hard to get that evidence. If oh, <laughs> oh, chat, if only the ever infamous words. If only there was some way I could use it. Hmm. January 8th, 3 04 p.m., just a court courtroom number four. If only, chat. Mr. Wright, yes, Your Honor. I granted you a recess so you could prepare this decisive evidence you've discovered. Um, yes. Don't keep us all in su suspense, Trite. Show us. Naturally. We can assume it's evidence that will that will actually stand up in court. Can't we? Think, Phoenix. Don't let Gumshoe's hard work go to waste. How much more of my time are you, you gonna waste? I ain't been to no court before. But you lawyers should know how to blow things out of proportion. Bang. No doubt, given the nature of the evidence, it will speak for itself. Nevertheless, you will talk us through it, Mr. Wright. Well, I know I can't prove anything new with this evidence. I'm really backed into a corner here. Maybe if he thinks he's got me beat, he'll let his guard down a bit. Don't keep us waiting any longer, Mr. Wright. Not this final decisive piece of evidence to the court. Well, we have to. Take that! Take that. Are we gonna lie what's on the bottle? Oh, maybe it'll be something stupid. Like, we tell him the poison's on there, and then he's like, oh, oh, I didn't use the bottle or something. That would be really dumb, chat. Do you think he's gonna do it? That would be a really dumb gotcha. This case better not end that way. I'm gonna be kind of disappointed. Isn't that the victim's... Your Honor, naturally, the court is already aware of the contents of this bottle. However, interesting new information has come to light. We have clearly identified some fingerprints on it. Fingerprints belonging to, to, belonging to you, Mr. Tigre. What? You don't, 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 don't. But, Mr. Wright, what conclusion are you hoping to draw from this new information? Everyone here knows what this bottle contains. Except one man. One person in this courtroom should theoretically be in the dark. My prints on that pansy-looking bottle? Is that what you're saying? Well, what the hell is in it, anyway? Phony trial, a phony lawyer, and phony clues. Everything about this case has been phony. Seems like the perfect excuse for some phony evidence. Okay, so he, so we are gonna lie about the evidence. Mr. Tigre, this is a decisive piece of evidence that will prove your guilt. Why? Because it contains... Sure, <laughs> strong oils. A good one. Well, let's lie about the poison. This bottle contains potassium cyanide. P potassium cyanide? The poison used to murder Mr. Elg, Your Honor. The victim's killer used this very bottle. And on this bottle, Mr. Tigre, we found your fingerprints. Well, how do you explain that? Oh, <laughs> you'd... You make a good clown, you know that? Oh, please no more clowns. We, we had enough clowns for the entire series, to be honest. What? You was ain't never gonna get this to stick. He's just making me laugh now. <laughs> Imagine actually presenting false evidence. <laughs> we, we should definitely get this part for that. <laughs> you think a cheap bluff like that's gonna fool the tiger? A bluff? I can see straight through you, Phoenix Wright. I need the bottle with the cyanide in it. Oh man, it really is going that way. No, no. This is the bottle we found traces of the poison in. Don't mess with the tiger. You're gonna get ripped to shreds. The cyanide bottle was brown. It was made of glass. Oh, what an idiot. That cheap piece of trash don't look nothing like it. Wow.
<laughs> I love that. I love the dead silence and then special gets played. Dot dot dot. Got him. At last. What? Why's everyone gone quiet? I said that bottle. Is this the bottle you're referring to? Yeah, that's it. That's the bottle the cyanide was in. You just ain't gonna find my prints on that bottle. Don't let that cozy looking suit fool you people. That lawyer's just playing games. Tell him. Tell him, Mr. Prosecutor. Tell that guy where to go. Still haven't figured it out. Don't you realize what you just said? What I said? What What did I just say? You were summoned to this court for the first time earlier today. Really had nothing to do with the murder. Shouldn't have known all the little details. For instance, you shouldn't have known what kind of bottle the potassium cyanide was in. <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely needs a blue data in there. Er, er. But just now, you slipped up in front of every single person in this courtroom. Describe the exact bottle used by the killer to hold the poison. Uh, um, you just don't know who you was messing with. I'm the tiger. I control millions of dollars on the black market. You just think I'm going to let some jumped up suit get the better of me? Sure. Last piece of evidence was phony. But that's just what you deserve. The phony trial with a phony lawyer. It was all played out by you. The biggest phony of all. Hey, let's see his freak out. Uh, uh, see, but we had that before. That's not a really good freak out. Oh, that's better. That's a little better. He already roared a couple times. Did he turn out the lights with his roar? What's going on? It looks like a blackout. Love the wiser. Well done. Right. I saved my 17th cup of coffee just for you. Oh. Savor it. While you watch the police restrain your prey. Just casually getting assaulted again in the courtroom. Just, it's like, I feel like at this point, we need to start a calendar of, like, days since last assault and just put it at zero, basically, every trial we've been in. Mr. Wright, you caught a tiger by his toe, but if this one hollers, he won't be let go. Oh boy, that was cheesy. Now then, how are things going with Mr. Tigre and Mr. Godot? He's being arrested on suspicion of the murder of Glenel, Your Honor. Fortunately for us, we managed to rectify a very grave error. Miss Bird was found guilty in the absence of a genuine defense attorney. Yes, she was. <laughs> yeah, assault, exactly. And in the absence of genuine evidence, the tiger made one mistake. Indeed. He very nearly got away with everything, if it wasn't for that one slip of the tongue. Furio Tigre is a truly frightening criminal. At least not, you guys are just dumb. Right, chat? I'm like, I don't think he really outsmarted anybody. <laughs> you guys are just too stupid to realize what he was doing. Ugh. I feel like this was like the Tales of Eternia effect, where they need to have somebody that's allegedly smart, but they have to dumb everybody else down in the vicinity to make them seem smart by comparison. I feel like that went on with this more than some of the other cases. The truly frightening one is that that defense attorney over there Dell. Well, I'm now in position to deliver my verdict. The court finds the defendant, Maggie Bird, not guilty. Bang. That is all. The court is adjourned. January 8th, 4 10 p.m., District Court, defendant lobby number one. Mr. Wright, I, 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 I'm at a loss for words. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, Maggie. I was so mad when Mr. Wright landed me in all that trouble a month ago. Now I feel like I can forgive him. Hey, that wasn't me, Maggie. That was the tiger. Look, Nick, in the doorway. Detective Gumshoe. Oh, guess I'll be heading off then. See you around, pal. Wait. Detective Gumshoe. Oh, 
Oh, oh yeah. Congratulations, Maggie. Thanks. So awkward. I, I knew you were innocent all along. Why didn't you say that in your testimony then? Huh? Oh, well, I was... Actually, he technically did say it in one of our things, and he got told not to say that explicitly. That, that did happen at our court one. He didn't go as far as to say the word innocent, but then the other person said, remember, you're supposed to be neutral, yada yada. He did get chewed out, <laughs> technically. Well, guess I'll be heading off then. See you around. Wait up, detective. Just ran off. Maggie, why are you being so hard on him? He busted his butt for you. Thanks to him that we got the medication bottle. That wasn't even of any use. But... It's only because Mr. Wright used it so cleverly. Detective Gumshoe was just running around in circles. Poor guy. Looks like she still isn't, isn't ready to forgive him. Can't you put in a good word for him, Nick? Yeah, I is right. Help Gumshoe out. Clearly, clearly needs it. Oh, uh, Maggie? You know, Detective Gumshoe's been really worried about you through all of this. <laughs> Cleverly. Wanted to believe that, sir. And on the first day of the trial, he practically gave the judge a free pass to lock me up. Didn't have any choice, Maggie. He's a detective. He has to report the facts. He doubted me, that's why. Thought I might have done it. Gotta prove to her that Gumshoe really cares about her. I'm so tempted to present the attorney badge here in chat. <laughs> I kind of want to. I kind of want to. Hold on, let's save. <laughs> We're already done with the trial. I might, I might as well just mess around. I know. I'll give her a little present to celebrate her freedom. <laughs> just present the badge. Um, what's this? Huh? Oh, I thought it'd be a good present. You know, to celebrate your freedom. Oh. Well, I don't really get it, but... Thanks. I'll treasure it always. That didn't seem to do the trick. Well, this will be going now, then. Good things are gonna happen to you from now on, Maggie. I'm sure of it. Of course. No one can be that unlucky forever. I'll do my best to have some good news to report to you next time we meet, sir. Good. Look forward to it. Goodbye. Don't forget how you helped me. <laughs> Did we just lose our journey patch or we're free? <laughs> Game over. Oh no, the auto text. Box allegations surrounding Maggie have been cleared up. Man, it really got. I hate games that do that. And who knows? Maybe a whole new chapter of her life is about to start. I really just like that in games when they throw their auto text out of nowhere. There's a three re recipe for turnabout. That's one of my pet peeves, chat. Turnabout beginnings. Oh boy, is that young Edgeworth? What is even going on in this scene? There's a girl being held hostage by knife point. A gun. Quite something. Alright, so what I want to do is... Unfortunately, it's going to try loading something. We're going to ignore this. I don't want to do this case yet. Can I not do this case? Are you really going to force me to go through this? Let's not see this for now. We're gonna all F4 out of there. I don't want spoilers for the next session. Let's try this again. Yeah, I did confirm I did not get the achievement from before, even though I definitely talked to him multiple times and I presented multiple pieces of evidence. I don't feel like going back for it. Give it a second. So we'll keep our save file where we just kind of mess things up. Okay, so what's the difference between these two if I present the box? Take that! Take that! Here you are, a present to celebrate your freedom. That's, that's... A present from Detective Gumshoe, made with a ton of love. He said you lost weight and he was worried about you. D Detective Gumshoe? I, I actually really like weenies, you know. Urg, chat. Did you guys hear that? Pretty hungry myself, you know. Yeah, the trial dragged on a bit today, didn't it? Um, is it okay if I eat this now? So, how is it, Maggie? Like, our hair is, like, white due to the shading. That's so weird. 
Right, chat? Maya's hair is, like, almost bleach white in the middle. It's- it's really good. The case of the phony versus the real one ends, the false felt allegations surrounding Maggie have been all cleared up. Okay, we'll save that as our true ending. But this time we have the box. So nothing- we got a little extra scene, and then the box. There we go. She's growing her- growing gray in her old age of, like, 18. Well, I mean, according to many things in Japan, once you go over 20, you're, like, one foot in the grave. <laughs> Any minute now, you could keel over. I will leave that there, I guess. The good ending and the bad ending. So I guess let's talk about how we feel this case went. So let's let's be very blunt about it. I hated this case. <laughs> just I really I really dislike this case pretty much start to finish. I would say so far this is the weakest case of the cases we've done. I think I saw what they were going for, but man, I just the whole unveiling of the plan, the convenience of the old man, the fact that the guy literally doesn't really even look like us that much. Just every plot point was just really dumb. I just, I find it hard to enjoy it when it gets that stupid, unfortunately. So for me, it was definitely the worst case in the in the game so far. I'm hoping the next case is a little better. It at least involves Edgeworth, who I kind of like. And I like Godot as well, don't get me wrong. But man, it kind of dragged with some of that stuff. I also did not appreciate the the stereotypes of the chef in particular. The fact that he was in it for so long, plus the guy flicking his nose, I just felt genuinely was kind of gross. I just felt kind of uncomfortable playing the case pretty much start to finish for those reasons. So between like the poor logic of the case, the ridiculous fake out of the mirror, with the even stupider reveal that the guy that is like bright red with hair, that should still be pretty obvious even if he was at the counter, he should have been able to recognize said person too when he went into the first trial. There's so many times where we had such really flimsy pieces of evidence, and honestly, if it if the guy had even tried slightly to just basically say, nuh uh, prove it, that it came from there on that day, it would have been fine. So it just, like, the whole victory of the case depended on him being dumb, but yet he somehow outsmarted, or at least intimidated slash outsmarted everybody else in order to get away with it. So I guess it feels kind of like a contradiction to me. I just didn't really like how that case played out for the most part. So unfortunately it introduced probably the most number of characters I haven't liked since the circus. So honestly I'm willing to almost put this- I think I'm willing to put this in bottom three. I'm gonna be honest with you chat, like I, I don't think I would ever want to replay this again. Comments about the chef would not fly today, yeah. Hold an at 20 on intimidation in the previous case and comfort for his lack of intelligence and wisdom, maybe. I was 100% not a fan, so that put me kind of in a bad mood towards the end. I apologize if it came off like that at some point during the trial, but man, I was getting real tired of the French chef and the him them calling him a woman and other things. That really bothered me, I'm not gonna lie. So definitely do not recommend this case. Very disappointing. I don't think this aged well at I all. Hate it. I, I hate, hate it indeed. It. So very disappointing. I feel like the rest of the cases were fine. Like, nothing that I would say would potentially put it over the first game. But this, for me, was a big sour note. Pretty much start to finish. I, like, I don't think we're ever going to get, like, the mystery that, like, super, super trips me up. Like, the thing that tripped me up is that the thing they did was even dumber than just using a mirror. Like, it was just even dumber. Like, it just, like, it was like, really? But why? Yeah... Well, the thing is that they called him a woman before he said he was a woman, Murphy, and that's where I have a problem with that. He randomly referred to himself as a woman throughout, but not in the presence of those other characters. So it's just kind of kind of got annoying to me, honestly. So I'm not, not a fan of his dialogue at all, start to finish. But I think from the standpoint, at least I hope that character will never be reoccurring. Because I would like for him to not appear in the next case, at least, which shouldn't be the case. But I'll, I'll think about it. I don't know. I, I think for the most part, like, Glenn Elg was kind of okay. At least I don't feel like it wasted my time a whole lot like the second game does, or did with some of the other cases. 
And I was kind of hoping the old man would be more vindicated than somebody... I don't even know how he ended up in Glen Ellick's outfit. Like, the whole logistics of it is stupid. Like, was he wearing his suit? Did he put on the other guy's hoodie? They don't even have the same body type, chat. Like, it's just, like... It should have been, like... It should have been, like, watching, like, the equivalency of... You know, like try to put on like kids' clothing. Like they're they they do not even look that similar in physique at all. It should have been like painfully obvious on so many levels. And granted, like even if you say like he didn't see him for a long period of time, he at least saw his face at one point to identify where the the earpiece was. It just I don't know. I'm I'm just not buying it. Even with the ridiculousness of the old man only paying attention to some details, I just don't buy it, chat. So I think it's down there for me in terms of believability. Uh, I think between the second games, they, he fell a long distance, was basically on the verge of death and wrote the message, and then all of the big reveal of the circus won. So they, it's pretty far down there for me in terms of uh, believability. It's very unfortunate. To be honest, witness testimony is exceedingly useless. Murphy, he's red. He's red, Murphy. He's very red. <laughs> they don't they don't even look like remotely similar. And granted, even if we say that he didn't say the real him, he saw him in court later. <laughs> he saw him as the defense attorney. And that's where it falls apart. Where if he didn't do that, I would be more willing to concede that. But he had to go through an entire testimony with that defense attorney and not realize it was the same guy. Like, come on, cut me a break. Hopefully none of the characters from this case recur, except maybe Robot Lady and Cad Cadaverini Lady. Yeah, Cadaverini Lady was okay. Robot Lady, I feel like she could probably end up just being a cameo character, and that's fine. I don't really want her to play a major role if she shows up again. I think for the most part, I was just happy there wasn't, like, five joke characters. There was just the old man. So I basically got through it. And that's why I'm not rating it lower than the other cases. But yeah, this was this was not my favorite case. So we're going to reset the mood, I think, for next time that we go to play. I'm at least done with this case. Although I'm not going to lie, chat, if the next case is all about like channeling, I'm also going to be put in a very bad mood. And I know it's coming because they were building up for it for several episodes. And they're talking about the will they, won't they with channeling of the spirits. So I feel like it's coming. It's I guess it's not technically guaranteed, but there's like a more than more than more likely than not chance the next case, unless there's five cases, in which case maybe the fifth case is about it. Um, that before the end of the game, we're gonna have to deal with the channeling again, which again is one of my least favorite things about the Phoenix Right. Fully expecting Old Bag to show up and get into a shouting match with Gudo. I mean, I'm just hoping I don't see her again for a while. It's okay that they referenced her at one point, and that's fine. They can reference the other characters as a nice little thing. I don't have any problems with that. I just have a problem when they're the witness, and they have one gimmick, and they have one annoying character trait, and then that's all they are for the entirety of the run. Like, Old Bag repeating the fact that she mistook who was in the costume in literally two different games is very lazy to me. I if they're going to use her, I'd rather they do her very differently, if that makes sense. I think it'd be more surprising if she was an actual competent witness. <laughs> That's something I would like to see a character arc with her, chat. The redemption. <laughs> if they're going to bring her back, I hope that they do something like that. But anyway, chat, uh, I think that's all I have to say for this particular trial. So definitely, definitely not my favorite. Um, would not play again. It wasn't it, the uh, the positive thing I will say about it is it could have been much longer and it wasn't and I'm thankful for that. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. So I guess we'll go ahead and say goodbye to YouTube. If you did watch to this point in the video or the VOD, I'd just like to say thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.